to a great receiver named Steve Lodgett. And on the ground, he's got Sherman Smith, the big back to work with, who can turn it on outside because he's got the speed to go with it. So Seattle can cope with any team offensively. But the Atlanta Falcons have their own weapons. Steve Botkowski at quarterback. And unerringly, he can find Wallace Francis. And then on the ground, the brilliant rookie from Auburn, Billy Andrews, who started the season with a terrific bang. So, tonight on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football Live, it's the Atlanta Falcons against the Seattle Seahawks. 20 seconds to air, stand by all cameras. Ready. Stand by in videotape. Stand by slow mo. Stand by to open your mics on the field. Ready. Stand by in graphics. Ready with your open super. Ready. Stand by the announcers in the booth, please. And roll tape. Roll Three, two, one. Take tape. from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. The Seattle Seahawks and the Atlanta Falcons and this ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Datsun, who invites you to test drive the all-new 200 SX Sport Coupe. It'll drive you like you've never been driven at your Datsun dealer now. And by the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Hello again, everyone. This is Frank Gifford, along with Howard Cosell and Fran Tarkenton. You're looking at Jim Zorn. He leads the Seattle Seahawks. Disappointing on the year. They're three and five, but they feel they are still alive in their Western Division of the ASC. Atlanta, three and five. They are definitely alive in the National Division, the National Football Conference Western Division. Howard? Frank, if as some coaches say, as you look at Jack Patera right there, the crowd can influence a game. I don't know of any place where they can do it more than here in Atlanta. This town, this great and growing city is alive and they have Falcon fever regardless of the present record. There's Lehman Bennett. Lehman Bennett, he took over three years ago. Last year brought the Atlanta Falcons to their first playoff ever. They got by Philadelphia, they lost to Dallas. We're set to go, Atlanta has won the toss. A friend Herrera will kick off. Deep is number 81, Dennis Pearson. There he is. It's been raining during the course of the day. The rain has let up. The field is fast. They've had it covered throughout the day. It's in good condition. And as you can hear, a crowd of over 60,000 expected tonight, a sellout crowd. A friend Herrera pops it. At the 10-yard line is Haskell Standback. And Standback out over the 25 for the 28-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for the Atlanta Falcons. That quarterback will be Steve Bartkowski. A pure passer, as pure as you could want. However, he has been not throwing the ball as he says he can. The offensive line, perhaps in the middle, is the best with Jeff Van Note there. The wide receivers, they're small, but they're very effective. 84, Alfred Jenkins, and number 89, Wallace Francis. Bartkowski brings up the Falcons. The ball at the 28-yard line. The setbacks, Lynn Kane, 21, the rookie from USC. He gets the call, sweeping left. And he's breaking tackles, and it's a pickup of a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight, tackled there by Autry Beeman, coming up defensively for the Seattle Seahawks. And let's meet the Seahawks. Carl Eller, you know about him, the veteran from Minnesota, acquired just before the season started. The linebackers, Keith Butler, Terry Beeson, Sammy Green, and let's take a look at the secondary. Cornell Webster over the left corner. He scored for the Seahawks last week in their upset of the Houston Oilers. Second down and eight. Andrews, single setback. Two tight ends are in. McKeskey is in there. But the ball goes to Andrews. And the rookie pounds out short of a first down. Over the 35-yard line. Hit there by Carl Eller. It'll be, they'll call a third and four for William Andrews. 
Frank, as you look at Steve Barkowski's statistics, William Andrews started the season off with two 100-yard games. Has not run as well the last four or five weeks as Atlanta's lost five out of six. They expect more out of that uh, running back position tonight. Two wide receivers back into the game on third down and four. Motion man is Kane. Leaving Andrews, single setback, Bartkowski. This is Kane. And the rookie, who won the starting spot over Bubba Bean, gets the first down for Atlanta. Moving out over the 40-yard line to the 41. First and 10, Atlanta. Seattle, as I said at the very top of the telecast, Giff has the offense, as you look at Lynn Kane out of USA, to cope with anybody. And that 34-14 ripping of Houston proved it. But... The Atlanta Falcons have a way of producing on Monday Night Football when one looks at their record. Remember our second game of the year when they beat Philadelphia. On a quick snap, Barkowski to the air, fires to Kane. Kane has the ball. Good receiver, this young man who blocked most of the time at USC, although he did behind their high-powered offense. Gain over 800 yards. He was principally a blocking back for Charles White. He gets four yards on it, second down six. Frank, you said Steve had told you that he wasn't producing the way he felt that he could. Did he enlarge on it? He didn't tell me that. I read it in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that takes care of that. Second down six. He told me that, though, uh, Frank. <laughs> Ball just over the 45-yard line. off Andrews and the rookie from Auburn who broke into the NFL with that big game you might recall the opening day of the season 167 yards rushing for this little man who really well he wasn't that productive at Georgia he was more of a blocker than anything else well at Auburn as you said Frank he was a blocking back but when he got here they learned a that he had great hands and could catch the ball and B that he could run surprisingly well and while he got the 160 yards plus in the opening game, as first down is registered for Atlanta, in the second game against Philadelphia, again, got more than 100 yards, and he looked like another Otis Anders. He has fallen back, as Fran said, but they expect him to bust out of it tonight. One thing to look for here, Frank, Atlanta will throw to their backs a lot. Seattle does not defense the pass uh, to the backs very well. The linebackers weak pass coverage-wise. Two tight ends, single setback. McKeska, 87, the other tight end, along with Mitchell, 86. Mayberry, the rookie from Colorado, single setback. Gets the call, finds a little opening, but he's smashed to the ground. Hit there by the middle linebacker, Terry Beeson, number 58. One of the reasons why they expect Andrews to have a big night tonight is based upon the graphic you saw a moment ago. Seattle, 22nd in defense. Interesting thing, Howard and Frank. Atlanta has played three running backs so far tonight. Kane, Mayberry, and Andrews. All of those uh, fellows are rookies, but they all three can play well. Mayberry, the rookie from Colorado, gets three yards, second down, seven. Bartkowski again to the air. Fires, complete. Out for Jenkins. Close to a first down. Jenkins now with his having caught successfully at least one pass in 50 consecutive games. He's not all that big. 5'10", 175 pounder, and he gets the first down for Atlanta. Atlanta moving the football. Frank Alfred Jenkins listed at 175, but yesterday he weighed after practice 151 and a half. He may be the smallest man in football. First and 10, the ball at the 37-yard line of Seattle. And off is Mayberry, and Mayberry gets to the 35. Very important here for Atlanta to get going. That's why Fran, in a pregame interview, asked Steve Botkowski, what do you have to do to get the offense going? Well, I think basically from a quarterback standpoint in our offensive scheme, they need to be able to count on a consistent game week in and week out uh, out of the quarterback. And, and I've been inconsistent, uh, as many of our guys have throughout the year, and I think that... Uh, I need to string two or three games together and, and get back on the right track. Quick count on second down and eight. The ball carrier is Kane. Kane finds an opening. Kane. Kane into the end zone. A flag is down. A flag is down at the 10-yard line. And then Kane, a six-foot one, 205-pound rookie out of USC, really turned it on, broke tackles. But again, a flag is down at the 10. I think the call was against. The defense, but that remains to be seen. I That's think one way to get the offense going. I think it was a face mask. This guy, Lynn Kane, 
came on last week against San Francisco in that defeat. He caught the ball well. He ran the ball well. They think he's a good football player. In Southern California, he was a blocker for Charles White. But he can also Number run, as we just saw. This game has just begun. As you heard the call, referee Bob Frederick, you saw the call. Face mask. Kane goes 35 yards, and now comes Tim Mazzetti. Conversion, yes, but he put the thrill back in it last week <laughs> with a couple of misses against San Francisco. Not this time, however, and Atlanta is on the scoreboard. They have a way on Monday nights. Let's look at it again. And this club, the Falcons, is better than its record suggests. But you watch Seattle strike right back with Zorn and Largent and Smith and their weapons. And a good block by the rookie from Colorado, James Mayberry. As you look at the face mask, Kane rolling in. Atlanta has a 7 0 lead. We'll be back in a wild and crazy Atlanta Fulton County Stadium in a moment. The Firestone Forever and the Sears Die Hard. Take a close look at the warranties. The free replacement part of the Die Hard full warranty ends after only 90 days. But if the Firestone Forever battery ever fails to hold a charge, Firestone will replace it free for as long as you own the car in which it was originally installed, provided it isn't damaged due to accident, abuse, or a bad charging system. If you need a battery and you're going to keep your car for more than 90 days, you want the Firestone forever. Bill got a new wagon. It's my 1980 Jeep Cherokee. Oh, an ordinary wagon isn't good enough, huh? Hey, my <laughs> Cherokee rides real smooth. It's roomy, hauls heavier gear. And of course, it's got four-wheel drive. And my Cherokee gets about the same gas mileage as your full-size two-wheel drive wagon. Bill, here's your old spot on the blacktop. Not for me. Wow! That Cherokee is some wagon. Jeep Cherokee. It takes you off the blacktop and puts you on top of the world. Lynn Kane, who set a record for USC fullbacks while blocking for Charles White of rushing for over 887 yards, has gone 35 yards. Scores for Atlanta. Penalty on the conversion. Tim Mazzetti will kick off at the 30-yard line. Deep is Jeff Moore, number 32, and Tony Green, number 34. Jeff Moore, a rookie out of Jackson State. Tony Green, he's been much traveled since the celebrated year last year with the Washington Redskins. Mazzetti gets a big foot into it. Tony Green at his two-yard line. And Tony Green rolls for good yardage, tackled there by Ray Easterling, and let's beat the offense of the Seattle Seahawks. Jim Zorn, he can do it all at the quarterback spot, number 10. Sherman Smith, he's carrying the load, both in receiving and in rushing. Wide receiver, Steve Large, and one of the best in the business. And there is the offensive line, perhaps the best two. A lineman there, Tom Lynch, 61, John Yarno, 51. First and ten. The ball at the 30-yard line of the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks last week upsetting the Houston Oilers 34 to 14. They still think they can get back in their Western Division race of the ASC. Dominated now by San Diego and Denver as we look at Dan Dornick. And Dornick struggles for additional yardage out close to the 35-yard line. Giving five, it'll be second and five. Putting Atlanta's defense in perspective as you look at the defensive line. Yates from Wiener. Fields and Smith, Kuykendall, Pennywell, Brazina at the linebacks. And the defensive backs, Roland Lawrence, Rick Bias, both small, Reed and Easterling. So there's the defense. I'll get back to the point I was about to make in a moment. Frank, Seattle comes up. Three wide receivers, 83, Steve Rabel is in there. Handoff goes to Sherman Smith. And the big four-year man from Miami of Ohio who does it all for Seattle gets a couple of yards. It'll be third down and two. Frank and Fran, as you both know, the past two years, Atlanta surprised the whole league with a kind of kamikaze defense. They came from everywhere. Blitz, blitz, blitz. This year, they apparently thought the league would catch up to it. They've laid back. Look for a return to that blitzing tonight because what they did hasn't worked. The secondary undersized, as I said, with Lawrence and Bias. Largent McCullough on the wide receivers. Brian Peach, the tight end, 88, back in the lineup. Darn, play action. Watch Largent, incomplete. Covered nickelly there by Roland Lawrence. The little cornerback on the left side at 5'10". Fourth down, and out will come the punting unit. And Frank, that time he got pressure. This Atlanta team, as you said, Howard, has not been aggressive. They had kind of a training camp-type workouts this week, full scrimmages. 
They're really hopped up for this game. They want to get back to their grits, blitz, and their aggressive style play, and that is their style. They haven't been playing their style this year. So far in the first series, looks like they're back to it. There's Dennis Pearson for Atlanta at his 24-yard line. Herman Weaver punting for Seattle. A little over 41-yard average thus far in the season, and he had to hurry to get it away. Fair catch called for by Pearson, unnecessarily so at the 25-yard line. Good call, Atlanta. Right. But the 7 0 lead will have their second possession when we return in just a moment. It's year, your new Datsun 200SX. Once you get in this new sport coupe, you won't want to get out. Five speed stick, outstanding gas mileage, four speaker stereo, electric outside mirrors, central sensor system, digital clock, and optional skyroof. The young Datsun 200SX, you'll want to drive it forever. To drive you like you've never been driven. Well, you've just sold me on a great typewriter. But I work with numbers. The Lanier No Problem typewriter does more than just type. Financial typing, no problem. It even adds and subtracts. I do our personnel list. Will it help there? No problem. It sorts alphabetically and numerically and gets your work back faster. The Lanier No Problem Electronic Typewriter. It does more than just type. Saturday, tough regional action. First, Syracuse, Pittsburgh. Ohio State, Illinois, plus other games. Then Arizona State, Stanford. Headlines later games. Check local listings on ABC. What makes you think the man is not a monarch? <laughs> and we, all, we have an election year coming. <laughs> First and ten Atlanta. They look surprisingly well, considering having lost five of the last six games on that first drive. They lead seven to nothing. The ball just over the 25-yard line. Bartkowski hands off to Kane, and Kane explodes once again out over the 25, close to the 27. It'll be a gain of six. It'll be second and four. I'll tell you, Howard, if I were Steve Bartkowski right now, I've got a hot running back in Lynn Kane. I would feed him that football. He's pepped up, and he's running hard, and the line's blocking for him. Absolutely. He just came out for a moment, but I'm sure only for a moment. What Atlanta has are the bookends, the young tackles. Ken, second down three. Stop for a moment while we get this play. Ball at the 33-yard line, handoff to William Andrews, and Andrews has an Atlanta first down, moving behind Thielman and Bryant and Van Note. And going back to the basics, you would say is the paying off for Atlanta. They checked everything out. They started with their stance this past week. They went back and reviewed everything. Well, they've been building their offensive line the way the Jets have tried to build last with Marvin Powell and Chris Ward, two of the best in football. They've got Ken and Bryant, the bookends, and that's what they're going behind tonight. Alfred Jackson in, Bartkowski back on first and ten, has the time. Fires into the arms of Alfred Jenkins, complete. First down, Atlanta, out over midfield. Dave Brown, defensively for Seattle, was there, but this little man is hard to get a handle on. This is not bad coverage by Dave Brown here. He's a former Pittsburgh player. Nice pace. Look at the pace that Jenkins uses here. But Brown is with him. It took a great throw by Bartkowski. They feel that that's the side they want to go to. They think Brown is more vulnerable than the other side, Cornell Webster. We'll look for that as the night progresses as we look at Alfred Jenkins. Ball inside the 49-yard line. Split to the right is Al Jenkins. Left is Wallace Francis. Hand off. Andrews looking back to the inside. He found an opening. Gets inside the 45. Close to the 44-yard line. A gain of five. It'll be second and five. I notice you call Andrews William, which he prefers to be called, not Philly. Offsides indicated against Seattle. And when they mark it off, we'll tell you how they both stand. Seattle in the Western Division of the AFC with the 3-5 mark. San Diego and Denver both 6-3, and three, open 5-4. and four. In the Western Division of the NFC, Atlanta is much closer. They're 3-5. and five. New Orleans leaves that division with 5-4. and four. Atlanta, rather, L.A. is 4-5. and five. Number 56 offside. First down. Sammy Green, the linebacker, stepping offside. But a win tonight for Atlanta. They could move in. One game behind New Orleans tied with Los Angeles. So much is on the line for the Falcons who were in the playoffs a year ago. They like the feeling. On first and five, Andrews getting the call. Andrews breaks it. Upset by Dave Brown, but he has a first down and the flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Well, William or Billy, you can call him Ray or you can... 
call him Jay, and it's against Atlanta, as you saw. It doesn't matter what you call him. He's looking for a big night tonight against a weak Seattle defense. You know, Howard, it's a rather simple game. If you can control the line of scrimmage, you can win. Atlanta went back to basics, which means getting off the ball, trying to control the line of scrimmage on offense and do the same on defense. And they're controlling the line of scrimmage on offense tonight as we look at the officials' call. Offensive holding, number 21. Lynn Kane holding for Atlanta. That moves the ball back close to the 45-yard line. Down remains the same. First down, 17. The two tight ends are in now. Single setback. That's Andrews, 31. Bartkowski changing up. He's got Mitchell. Jim Mitchell, just his fourth reception of the year. Short of the first down, gets back to the original line of scrimmage and the couple, so it'll be second down and nine. Frank, as we look at the graphic here, three receptions and eight games for Jim Mitchell. This has been a premier tight end. That time, they didn't have any respect for Mitchell. They doubled both outside receivers as we look at Jim there. They left Jim Mitchell all alone on a linebacker, and that is not, that is a mismatch. As his, uh, have his skills diminished as a receiver? Has he slowed up? He tells me he hasn't. Uh, he said he used to run a 4-5. He might run a 4-6 now. I don't know if he's that fast, but he's still a good receiver. Jim Mitchell, the tight end, in his 11th year out of Prairie View. Second down, we'll call it eight. Markowski, Kane, no screen man in front of it, but he gets yardage on his own. Good run and a good tackle by Sammy Green, and Kane has an Atlanta first down. I love that play, Fran. You get a runner like Kane, Andrews, any good runner, and we're gonna look at it again. And you'll watch, 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 that. watch, watch the linebackers blitz. The free safety, Archie Beam, will have to come up and cover Lynn Kane. He's got to come from 10 yards down the field. You'll see he's got plenty of running room. There's Beeman coming to your pitch at 27. He slips him and gets 10 yards. That's the point. You get a receiver who can run with that football, put him out there. In one-on-one -on -one situations, they'll break him. We've talked about that often. First down, the ball at the 36-yard line. Andrews, right side. Eeks out a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. Beeson, the middle linebacker there, along with Hardy. The rookie starting defensive left tackle, number 75, out of Jackson State. That's the kid we spotted in the preseason game at Seattle when the Hawks beat Den uh, Dallas. Haughty, a low-round draft choice, but a pleasant surprise to the Seahawks. They ever put all the Jackson State players together, they could go to the Super Bowl. Watch the tight end again here, Frank. They're doubling both outside receivers. Quick toss. Andrews. Good defensive play. Seattle floating. Keith Butler, the initial hit there for Seattle. But there was a gain of about a yard. It'll be third down and six. And Beeson is, stays on the turf. A middle linebacker. Harry Beeson out of Kansas. Second round draft pick. He's been a starter since his second game as a rookie back in 77. He would be sorely missed. We'll be back in a moment. When you break horses for a living, the worst part is knowing they might break you first. Once you've done your job, the best part is knowing you've turned a terrified animal into a horse a man can count on. And now comes Miller time. Time to ease off and head for the best-tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life, America's quality beer since 1855. When it's time to relax, one beer stands clear. Miller Beer. You've got the time, we've got the beer. Miller Beer. Sunday at a special time, 8.30, 7.30 Central and Mountain, Jaws is coming. Middle linebacker Terry Beeson motors off on his own. He appears to be all right. Another Seattle defender was shaken up Dave Brown on that same play a moment ago. Terry Justin comes in for Brown. Peter Cronin in for Beeson. Third down and seven. The ball at the 32-yard line, Atlanta leading seven to nothing. Bartkowski 
Watch this. And under pressure, Gregory was in there pressuring, but the ball was batted away. Incomplete. Good play by Seattle. Good series for Seattle. A young team coming into this basically feverish and hostile crowd and a good test of their ability to maintain poise in an already difficult situation, Frank. It, it really is. Uh, this is an unusual crowd. Uh, L.A. saw it last year back in 73. The Minnesota Vikings had nine straight victories, and Atlanta upset our team. Uh, it's going to take a lot of poise from a young Seattle team. It'll be interesting to see how they react to this. Ball at the 32-yard line. John James come in to do the punting. There's Tony Green. He'll be trying to figure with James. James, of course, will be angling the ball for out of bounds. If indeed he goes with the punt, the one suspects that he will. It's early in the game. Next to Atlanta. <laughs> Falcon on the field. Got on the wrong side. And I think they're going to have to take time out. No, they took too much time. They should have taken time out. Not that it really makes any difference because, they, again, the line of scrimmage is the 32-yard line, and this will just... Perhaps give James a, a little better angle. Sure, they're better off this way. Dewey McLean was out there in the wrong position for Atlanta. He was over with the wide man to the right, when obviously he should have been to the left. James will try to hit the coffin corner. Clearly, he's one of the best punters in football. Fell off a little last year, but he had three straight Pro Bowl years for Atlanta. Hangs it high. the ball. They're well inside the five. It looks to be the two-yard line. Seattle, with a very hostile crowd in attendance, will start deep in their own territory. There's a car frozen in that block of ice, but when we chopped through the ice, the car started on the first try using Shell Fire and Ice Motor Oil. The same car tows a 30-ton crane through desert heat, but the engine is still protected by Shell Fire and Ice Motor Oil. Ask for Shell Fire and Ice 10W40 Motor Oil. Now with a new gas-saving formula, Shell Fire and Ice. For 1980, Datsun reinvents the pickup. Gonna pick you up like never before. With a new King Cab, only small truck with rear jump seats inside. Datsun's gonna pick you up with the hard-working, high-mileage Lil Hustler. Or new Datsun long bed over seven feet for extra cargo. Who's got the truck news? To revolutionize trucking. Not the most delightful of field positions for the Seattle team. They have tied into a bunch of hornets in the form of the Atlanta Falcons here tonight, a team that we knew that would be fired up. James Putt was down inside the three-yard line. Setbacks, 47, Smith, 33, Dornick. They'll try and give quarterback Jim Zorn a little breathing room. Dornick gets the call. He finds a big opening, and Dornick gets it out to the 10-yard line. Gain of seven. It'll be second down and three up into there by Frank Reed. Dornick, of course, was with the Giants, Fran. He was reasonably well regarded, but they have a youngster named Ken Johnson who they think has greater potential, so they let him go. Kid uh, turned out to be an excellent receiver, especially coming out of the backfield. Leading their team in receiving, and that was a big run he made to get him out of the hole. Second and three. Dornick. Doesn't get the first down up into there by Edgar Fields, bottom of that pile. The problem really with Dornick last year, he was a very bright youngster, and that's, of course, what you like. And we're going to have a call, and it's going to go against Seattle. Dornick, a very bright young man, and that's really what you want back in there when you're talking about receivers. But he had a shoulder problem last year, and although he did produce for over 300 yards for the Giants, he has been a real healthy asset to the Seattle Seahawks this year. They, of course, lost David Sims, their fine running back of last year. Which, is, the which has hurt them a great deal. Offensive holding, number 51. John Yarno, the center, holding. And that back to Seattle up. Ball at the five-yard line. Second down and eight. Three wide receivers are in. Rabel comes in. Out goes the tight end. Single setback is Dornick and Sherman Smith is there. Here's Sherman. 
And a fired up Atlanta defense. Swarms over Smith. Frank, this defensive football team of Atlanta plays the run very good, and they're giving Seattle many different looks. They feel they have to do that because Seattle's an excellent offensive football team. They're trying to confuse them with different looks. Third down and seven. Uh, swiftly paced game thus far. Atlanta out in front, seven to nothing. They scored on their very first possession. Lynn Kane going in from 35 yards out. Hi, guy. Important. Seattle gets out of this hole because they'll have to turn it over to Atlanta about midfield. Third down and seven. They must get to the 12. Oh, complete. Over the middle. It's Pete's the tight end. And Pete's has the first down. Out over the 20-yard line. First big play of the game for Seattle to get them out of the hole. We'll look at it again from the end zone. This is the poise I was talking about. And here's Orn going back. Interesting thing. No blitz by the Falcons. Plenty of time. Pete's wide open. Atlanta does not cover good in the secondary. It's interesting, Howard. We thought they'd come out with a lot of blitzing as we see Brian Pete's there, but they really have a yet. There's a lot of time. The first down is out to the 22-yard line. Hello, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Halloween's a couple nights away. Roachin' man is McCullum. Handoff, Sherman Smith. Smith. Reached at the line of scrimmage and struggled for a yard up into there. That's Defensively a, by Heikendahl. That's a player to be respected and maybe even admired. He began as a quarterback at Miami of Ohio. Remember, friend? In some ways, he reminds me of Andy Johnson of New England. He does. He's a big back, 6'4", 225. And he told me yesterday that the biggest adjustment that he had, he, he really had never taken a ball. Didn't know how to take the handoff. Never did not know how to get in the stance of a tailback. He's had to learn all that. And this year he's averaging 4.7 yards a rush, plus being the second leading receiver on the Seattle team. He's in the top 10 in the AFC in both rushing and receiving. Leading rusher for Seattle three straight years. A very gifted athlete, Sherman Smith. Darn. Didn't like something. Calls timeout. And we have 102 remaining in the first quarter, and Jim Zorn moves over to the Seattle bench, and we'll be returning to Atlanta right after this message. The Boeing 747, the Boeing 727, the Boeing 707, the Boeing 737, and soon two new airplanes, the 757 and the 767. The Boeing family, the world's favorite way to fly. The world feels a whole lot better when the people of the world all get together. The world feels a whole lot better when we all get together. Look! It is such a big world. See! All the places and the faces. Feel! All the loving and the laughter. Bring it up together. And you'll see the world feels a whole lot better. Boeing jetliners have done more to jet the world together than anything ever made by man. The world feels a whole lot better when we all get together. Your favorite television stars up to their necks in fun. <laughs> Lots to look at Friday night in the Battle of the Network Stars on ABC. That show is pure fun. You're going to enjoy it. Some of the greatest stars in television. Ed Asnes, Bobby Conrad, Dick Van Patten, Billy Crystal, a super young talent. Some of the most beautiful young women in the world, led by perhaps Erin Gray. Seattle has the football. Jim Zorn did not like his setup on second down and eight. All timeout, talked it over. Over in the sidelines, he's back now looking at the second and eight from the 24-yard line. Play action by Zorn. Wide open. And that is Steve Largent. And he is one of the fine receivers in football today. And Largent gets out over the 45-yard line to the 46-yard line. And he was really wide open. Here's Largent. He's not very fast and he's not very big. But all you kids out there think you have to be a big man to play this game? Look at this man play. He's one of the premier receivers in football. Notice that tonight the two key receivers are undersized men. Jenkins, number 84 of Atlanta, only 151 and a half pounds. Largent, another undersized man. 23-yard pickup by Largent and Zorn. What a combination that's been. A couple of big touchdowns last week against Houston. They're back on stride. 
Slides in again. This time Zorn puts it behind him. Defensively. He doesn't lay what he did. And Roland Lawrence were there for Atlanta. Jimmy really made a bad, bad throw as we watched Steve Largent there. But I'm impressed with this young quarterback, Jim Zorn. I think he's one of the truly great young quarterbacks in the game, and he's done a good job of bringing his team out of a hole, overcoming a penalty, and has got him in pretty good shape here. Remember, this all began inside the third yard line, the three yard line. They did have the holding penalty. Big completion to his tight end, Brian Peets, and another large completion to Largent. Ball at the 47 yard line. Second and 10. Dornick. As Tom Lynch out in front. Dornick with a good move. It's close to midfield. A gain of about three. It'll be third down and seven. Roland Lawrence coming up to turn it to the inside. And that's the end of the first quarter. Good, hard hitting football game from Atlanta. Atlanta on top, seven to nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. Do you believe I forgot to change my antifreeze? You know how embarrassing it is having your tow truck towed? You should have kept your guard up. <laughs> Get it, animal. Fat chance, Slim. Should have kept your guard up. Keep your guard up with Dowguard antifreeze. Dowguard protects against freeze-ups, boil-overs, rust, and corrosion all year round. Dowguard coolant antifreeze. Six. Bob it, I think Seven. you got it. Just remember, keep your guard up. Hey, I expect you got most valuable. That's you, 210. Dotson 210 hatchback. You call it most valuable. Hey, it ran for a big 31 miles per gallon. Tough city driving. Dotson 210, our number one gas mileage car. It's money in the bank, not in the tank. What's the secret of your success, Dotson? We are driven. Yes, we are driven to build America's most valuable car. Who do you share the power with? The power of Vitalis Superhold, the pump. With Tom, every morning. I share it with Jill. We share the power of the pump. Vitalis Superhold, the pump keeps my... Uh, keeps our... Keeps our hair looking terrific. Why should women settle for less power when they can get the holding power of the pump? It can hold longer than the leading men's aerosol. Come on, it's better when you share. Get the pump, Vitalis Superhold, and share the power. Jim Zorn back in the huddle as we begin the second quarter has brought the Seattle Seahawks from inside their own three-yard line to the 49-yard line. Third down now and eight. Very gifted athlete. You don't put pressure on him as we see now Atlanta in a 3-4 yeah. defense. And they're going to come. Threatening a safety blitz. Zorn looks it over calmly. They're going to come, Frank. There they come, everybody. Good pickup. Zorn looked like he trapped it. Steve Rabel. They say, no, it's complete. Well, that's what you got to do. If you're going to stop Jim Zorn, Fran has mentioned, <coughs> you got to give him different looks. Frank has mentioned, you got to pressure him. They just did. They got to use the kamikaze defense. That's their style of play. It's the first time we've seen it tonight, and it did what they wanted to do. It prevented the first down and the third down situation. Dennis Pearson, almost 12 yards per return. Herman Weaver on for Seattle on fourth down. This time they blocked it. They almost got the first one. Great and it's bye. taken there by number 38. Frank Greg Bias. Bias scores. They almost blocked Herman Weaver's first punt. We mentioned it at the time. This time they were all over it. Now that's what Atlanta can do. Pouring in. Send everybody. Watch. Here it is. This is an opportunistic team. I mean, he took it right off his foot. What a block. I mean, he got it all the way. I'm trying to get the number of the man who blocked it. But that's I Rick believe Bias it was Pridemore. Tom Pridemore, I believe. I think you're right, Frank. Number 27. Atlanta fired up tonight. Herman Weaver, a long striding punter. They almost blocked his first punt of the night. This one they did. Mazzetti puts Atlanta out in front 14 to nothing. Atlanta's not playing for fun. They're playing for the season tonight, and they know it. They this is it. little Tom Pridemore, number 27, at the bottom of your screen. He's a great special teams player. There he goes. He gets the block. Rick Bias picks it up. That is the kind of aggressive team that Atlanta knows it's got. And we'll be stand. back in just a moment.
They came from every state in America, by car, by bus, some even on foot. The roads backed up for over 50 miles. The crowds didn't deter them, nor the mud, the rain, the discomfort, because for the nearly half million people who came here on August 9th, 1969, only one thing mattered, music. Freedom. we understand how much music means to people. So we design our high fidelity components not to add anything or take anything away, but to recreate all the excitement of a live performance. That's what's made us number one today with people who care about music. Pioneer, we bring it back alive. For Saturday, top regional action. First, Syracuse, Pittsburgh. Ohio State, Illinois, plus other games. Then Arizona State, Stanford. Headlines, later games. Check local listings on ABC. And those are the other games you'll be treated to this Saturday. Consult your directory to determine the game you'll see in your area. The beginning of the second quarter, a block punt, and Atlanta's a 14 to nothing lead. Rick Bias taking it in, 38 yards. And here is Tony Green from his own end zone for Seattle. And Green makes an opening on his own, moves out over the 30-yard line, where it'll be first and 10, and Seattle will have to get something going here very quickly. Green looks a little bit better than he looked with the Redskins when they dropped him and with the Giants. He's beginning to get a little flare back. At halftime, you'll meet Willie Mays, and you'll meet, there's George Steinbrenner and Billy Moore. You'll meet, you will meet also Bowie Kuhn at length. And, of course, two overriding stories. The disassociation from baseball of Mays and the dismissal of Billy Martin as manager of the Yankees. Kuhn has some revealing things to say about the Martin situation. Halftime today. First and ten, Seattle. And off, Dornick. And Dornick goes for about three. It'll be second down and seven. Key thing here, Frank, I think, for Seattle to keep in mind. This game has got three quarters to go. They're 14 down. That's really not a lot in professional football. They've got an explosive offense. Don't try to get it all back in one play. You're exactly right. That play was officially ruled a fumble, by the way. Not a block kick since Thunderfoot's foot never hit the football and has just started to pour. I would call it thoroughly blocked. <laughs> Second and seven. All out at the 34-yard line. Dorn again with the blitz. This time they pick it up. The screen, and it goes out to the tight end, Brian Peeks, and he's slowed under. And the man that got him was number 79, Jeff Yates. Discarded by the Buffalo Bills a few years ago, Howard. He replaced Claude Humphrey, a local favorite here, and a great defensive end. And he's a plugger. He's a, he'll scratch and do whatever he has to do to get into the play. He rushed the pass and then went back and made the play on the, on, on the receiver. Very tough last year. Surprised a lot of people. Look at the umbrellas suddenly Rain sprouting is trickling up. down. Trickling. <laughs> With Giff well, in Atlanta, right? they call it a trickle. <laughs> Third down, seven. Beats just to the line of scrimmage before Yates captured him there. Zorn looking for Larger. Larger wasn't open. Zorn gets the first down on his own. Now that's the way Zorn can kill you. And some of you fans around the country saw a young quarterback yesterday who showed ability, strength, mobility, young Phil Sims of the Giants. Here's the veteran Greg Brazina who's been under fire just a little bit here in Atlanta, particularly from his head coach, Lehman Bean, and he tried to call timeout, as you saw it. <laughs> and then uh, Zorn took off, unable to find the receiver. Brazina had to make the stop, but his first down, Seattle. A ball at the 45-yard line. Play action again by Zorn. Going deep to Larger. He's there, but slightly overthrown. He had the step, no question about it. Frank, you just saw Brazina make a play. It's the point I want to make. I think Lehman Bennett, the Atlanta coach, was bum-wrapped this week in the Atlanta papers. He was being asked about his team, and he said, they're generally speaking not playing as well as they did a year ago. And then he was asked about names, and he said about Brazina, Greg is not playing as well as he did a year ago. 
He didn't say he wasn't trying. He didn't say he was playing poorly. There's Greg now. And out it came. And then it wraps Brazina. Am I telling it like it was? You are, Howard, and it was an unfair headline. Greg Brazina is the emotional leader of this defensive football team. He's really fired up. He's been a class player his entire career and still a great football player in that outside linebacker position, as you'll see tonight. I think he understood it. And in any event, the Atlanta Falcons are a different football team tonight. Zorn on the rollout, second down and 10. And he completes the ball down to Largent. He has a first down. They are inside Atlanta territory. What a great ability. Nobody can throw on the run in the game of football as good as Jim Zorn. You people have not had a chance to see, to, to see much of Jim Zorn over the years. But here he is again. He is truly an exciting player in the National Football League. You see his speed gets him outside the rush. He's still running. He will throw on the run. That's a difficult thing to do. He hits Largent right on the numbers. Largent knows where to get out of bounds. Wonderful, wonderful play. Speaking looks, of throwing on the run. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like talking. The first and ten. The ball at the 39-yard line. Rain continuing to fall. And off to Sherman Smith. Piled up. Bottom of that pile. Fulton Peckendall. Gain of maybe a yard. There is Lehman Bennett. And the key thing is, and Fran brought it up, as you see the rain torrentially now pouring down, key thing is Seattle keeps their poise. They're not trying to get it all back on one play. Although there was a time when Lodgen had a step and the ball, if properly thrown, could have led to a Seattle touchdown. Seattle playing for conference pride. The AFC ahead of the NFC, 20 to 9. Second down nine. This is Dornick. Nothing to the outside. Turns it inside. Runs into Pennywell. Line of scrimmage, and that's about it. It'll be third and long now for Zorn. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, they set a lot of expansion records in the first three years up at Seattle. You know, it's a, it's a lot of pressure here on Jim Zorn, Frank. He's trying to get his running game going. He's not getting much out of his running game. They have to rely strictly on his passing. He's capable of doing it, though. He can carry that load. He's a very poised young man. He's going to have to throw in this situation. Third and eight. Ball up to 37. Zorn with the long count. Zorn goes to Dornick. He's short of the first down. That play I can't say. You've got to throw into first down territory. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what Atlanta's defense did there, Howard. They started faking the safety blitz. Jim Zorn changed his play at the line of scrimmage, thinking they were going to come with the safety. They did not come with the safety. Therefore, he didn't get the yardage that he needed. They That's... have a fourth down, and they do not send in either kicking unit. The ball at the 34-yard line. I like it, Jack Patera. Yes, I yes, do. Yes, sir. I like this. This, this is a good is call. Way to play the game. Down 14 to nothing. Fourth down and six. Ball up to 34. Three wide receivers. Ray they're they're coming with everything. They're coming with everything. Zorn will get the first on his own. He may get a touchdown. He may get a touchdown. He's going to get it. How about that? Jim Zorn, touchdown on the scramble. Back 34 the yards. Right back in the ball game, and that's the kid Francis has been talking about so much. And that's the price you play with the blitz. That is, th this is really something. I always thought the blitz was best against a scrambling quarterback, but here he splits the blitz. Nobody in the secondary. This young man can run. He is truly an exciting football player. He can beat you running or throwing the football or thinking. There he is, number 10, Jim Zorn. You're going to see a lot of him in the years to come. What Tom a play. Pridemore, frustrated, took Zorn in the end zone far too late. Seattle's on the scoreboard. A friend Herrera puts it through. Well, Seattle has drawn within a touchdown. Let's look at it again. A full blitz is on, and when you make a mistake against the when you're blitzing, either running or passing, it can be a long gainer. For this, a 34-yard touchdown for Zorn. We'll be back in just a moment. Famous Datsun Durability, backbone of our boldest new truck design in 20 years. Styled wheels, quad headlamps, and in the exclusive King Cab GL, jump seats and more room than any small truck. The bold Datsun pickups for 1980. Beautiful, of course, but their first job is to last. To build America's most durable small trucks. 
Here's to good friends. A toast. Good Here's to a vanishing breed. Bill Evans, bachelor. Here, here, here. End of a perfectly good ladies man. Oh. 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 To Bill Evans, a free man. 13 more hours. <laughs> when you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. Speech. 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 Come on, you guys. You're beautiful. An exclusive interview with Paul McCartney, Thursday on 2020. Again. Jack Patera, the head coach of Seattle. That man deserves a lot of credit for that touchdown. There is a time to gamble, a time not to gamble. 34 yards out, fourth down. Go for the first down. Even if you don't make it, you're down in their territory. Perkins gambled yesterday with the Giants needlessly, perhaps foolishly, with a 13 to nothing lead. He destroyed the momentum of his ball club. Patera did it at the right time. A friend Herrera pops it. Dennis Pearson at his three-yard line for Atlanta. Up into there, short of the 20-yard line. Now Seattle seems to be fired up, and there's the young man who pulled it all together. And I think really the time to gamble is when it works. And when you have a quarterback like Jim Zorn who gives you the option, either run or pass, as he did there, well, gifted athlete, roll it in. There's a point there, Frank, because the key to that drive was an earlier third down play when Zorn himself carried the ball and made the first down. And then, as Fran said, he split the blitz and rolled on in. Now the pressure comes back to the Atlanta offense. Let's see if they can keep it going. Andrews is the single setback. Back with the two tight ends. 87, Russ McKeska in there. Bartkowski to the air. And Barkowski down close to the line of scrimmage. Robert Hardy came in on the pass rush and then picked up Barkowski on pursuit. It'll be second down and nine. And not to knock Steve Barkowski. He's a fine quarterback, but there you saw the difference. He does not have the foot speed that Jim Zorn has to get out of trouble, to make a big play for his team running the football. That's a great bonus when a quarterback can give you that. Outside of you, outside of you, and he certainly didn't run a lot, so far this year. On second and nine, draw play. Andrews, and Andrews hustles out to the 25-yard line. Sammy Green there, one of several Seattle Seahawks in on the stop. Andrews a tough kid, Giff. Outside of you talk, who could run like Zone? There's a guy in New England by the name of Grogan who's not a bad runner. <laughs> That's right. They're going to bring this back. But they got to take another look at him. He's up and down. He's erratic. Penalty being marched off against Atlanta. Offensive holding, number 70. Second down. Dave Scott, the left guard, holding for Atlanta. Well, Howard, I'll tell you one thing. Atlanta better not get conservative because they're going to have to score a lot of points to beat this Seattle team. And they're going to have to keep wide open football going. There's your man. There's the Moose wearing 71, a great, great defensive end, starting now for Seattle the last few weeks. Second down, 20, Bartkowski from his own goal line. Firing intended there for Jenkins, and that could have been picked off, and Bartkowski took a lump. He really did, and they did not go conservative. Coming up with the pass play, give him credit for that. That was a good call. They did come up with the pass play. But the whole tenor, as you look at Bartkowski getting hit by number 75, Hardy. Bang. That takes its toll during the course of a game, during the course of a season. That kind of hit hurts. How do you know? Two oh, rookies goodness. in the middle of that line. <laughs> Manu Tuasasopo, a rookie from UCLA. Robert Hardy, the rookie from Jackson State. Third down, 20. Bartkowski will put it in the air again. Oh. As the time, and this one almost picked off. Keith Simpson went for it, incomplete, fourth down. Atlanta will have to punt. Frank, that was a key play by, by Keith Simpson there. Number one draft choice a year ago, just inserted to the starting lineup a couple of weeks ago. He's really played well for him with a strong safety position. He had good coverage then, almost the interception. There's James. He'll drop back into his end zone. Here's Tony Green. Had a tremendous year last year with Washington. 
Wheels came off somewhere in training camp. Released. Giants released him. Now he's looking a little perkier than he has. James. Picks it low. Green will have his opportunity. And Green is down, and Seattle has good field position. Well, as you noted, Jim Zorn earlier got his touchdown scrambling, and Fran had a chance to talk to him about that before the game. Jim, don't you know that you can't win with a scrambler? That's, I've never heard that. You're the first guy, and you ought to know better than anybody else. You can win with a scrambler. Let's go, Fran. Come on. But not a left-handed one. Now, that's the best kind. I see, you've always scrambled around back and forth, back and forth. I scramble more upfield, and, and with the left arm, it's even an added <laughs> <laughs> I like it. He's got a, he's got a little pizzazz. He it? does. That kid's got some charisma. First and ten. The ball is at the 38-yard line. Seattle down by seven. Darn. Hands off to Sherman Smith. There goes the outside, and the big man rolls inside the 30-yard line. Short of a first down, but nifty pickup. Well, you have to respect, again, the coach of the Seahawks, Jack Patera. This team reflects his coach. Down 14 points against a fired-up team, a hostile crowd as you look at Burley Jack. And they held their poise, held together. Now it's 14-7, and they're coming back, and the whole flow of the game has changed with the momentum clearly lodged with the Hawks. And they quieted down this crowd. He's got, he's got himself a sense of humor, too, Jack Patera. Having a little trouble out there. Saddle with some of the press. He said, I was trying to be funny, and I guess I'm not funny. Second down, a long two. Ball at the 29-yard line. Sherman Smith. Smith has the first down. Stopped there by Brezina. Notice how they're more open to the run now. You know, that's, that's really going to be dangerous if they get the run going like it looks like they're getting it going there. Earlier, they didn't. It hurt earlier. He was not coming back into the game, Brazina, but he's, he's tough. He's been around 11 years, and get those veterans have been around. They, they can play with a little bit of an ache and pain. First and 10, the ball at the 24-yard line. Dornick, the single setback for Seattle. Sherman Smith in a wingback slot. Dornick gets the call. Gets a couple. That'll be second down and eight. And on the stop, Robert Pennywell, the middle linebacker. There he is. Pennywell. He became a starter last year. Actually, he had done some work on the outside for Atlanta. He replaced Ralph Ortega in the middle of a year ago. Ortega now with the Miami Dolphins. They're going with three wide outs. Atlanta would like to blitz this formation. Let's see if they do. Rabel, the other wide receiver, number 83, with Largent, 80, and Sam McCullough, 84. For Rabel, and a flag is down. That is a defensive interference and penalty. No I'll question. tell you, Jim Zorn threw that ball way before he broke. He knows Largent. They work well together. Really a wonderful pattern that Largent ran. Great throw. It'll be so, a first sorry about Largent, inside but a great the five-yard line. Defensive pass interference number 22. First down. Roland Lawrence, the guilty defender for Atlanta. Look at it again. Well, he works good with that Sam McCollum there, but Rabel's on the top of your screen, 83, and he works good with Steve Rabel, too, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. It? <laughs> First and goal, 6.30 remaining in the half. Atlanta out in front, 14 to 7, Seattle threatening. Ball up the three-yard line. Largent adjusts to the wingback spot on the right side. Sherman Smith gets the call, tries to move south side, nothing doing there. That should be... Heikendahl, I believe. That situation, Fran, I've always liked the first down call of a pass. Well, it, it is a good call, but Seattle's got the momentum going there. I really cannot fault the run called in, but if you're going to throw down the goal line, first down is the time to do it. Now, really, they're looking for a pass. He has that extra something, though. He can come with a little rollout, give himself a run pass option. What you have when you have an athlete for a quarterback. Second and goal. Sherman Smith. Piled up. Line of scrimmage. 
It'll be third and goal. And now they, he must pass. Now they put a lot of pressure on themselves. They really do. You're right, Frank. They must pass in this situation. You're also right. Jim Zorn gives them an extra dimension there. Having a quarterback who can throw on the run like he can and also run the football is an added advantage. Evidence of that. Seattle's gained 146 yards. Zorn's accounted for 105 of them. 59 by the pass, 46 by the rush. But now on the spot. Atlanta picking pass also. They bring in a fourth linebacker, Dewey McClain. Play action, unnecessarily so. He's got it. He's got it. It's Sherman Smith. Denzarn with an unnecessary play action because the entire Atlanta defense was thinking pass. Still comes up with Sherman Smith touchdown. And the play action didn't hold the pass rush at all, as you'll see. He gets pretty good pressure. But Sherman Smith is some, some athlete come out of the back, but he almost drops this ball. He bobbles it, but he gets it in in time, I think. He did. He did. <laughs> he had to have control. He knew that. He gets the touchdown, and now a friend Herrera can tie it up. So what a comeback by Ooh. the Seahawks. Herrera pounds it through the uprights, and we have a tie football game at 14. 5-0 re one remaining in the first half. We'll be returning to Atlanta in just a moment. Introducing the 1980 Front Wheel Drive, Datsun 310. Only front wheel drive with fully independent suspension. And optional skyroof. And remote controlled rear windows. And rack and pinion steering. And 31 miles per gallon. The new 310 front wheel drive with Datsun quality behind it. To build America's most valuable cars. Can you imagine trying to photograph an Olympic gold medalist like Jean-Claude Kelly? It's quite a challenge. Made me really appreciate my Canon AE-1. The automatic shutter priority system is a must, especially when your subject's doing 50 miles an hour. Try it, it's fun. What? So the AE-1 is so simple to use. About all you do is focus and click. The incomparable Canon AE-1, so advanced, it's simple. Canon, the official 35mm camera of the Winter Olympics. Jim Zorn and the Seattle Seahawks, a young ball club with a lot of poise. They were down 14 to nothing. They have tied it up at 14. Most of it has been on the efforts of Jim Zorn. Set to kick off for Fran Herrera. Dennis Pearson is deep for Atlanta. Both teams three and five. Atlanta very much alive in the Western Division of the NFC. A win tonight for them, and they would move to within one game. Oh, oh kick Seattle. They, they got, got it. it. They got it, Frank. They, they should have had it. a wide open. It should have been handled. It was ultimately. There was no Falcon lineman in the area. A friend Herrera hit it beautifully for Seattle. And now this team we saw a moment ago go on fourth and seven. Zorn scored from 34 yards out. Now they come with an onside kick. Let's look again. Are you learning anything, folks? This is great football. Give Jack Patera all the credit. All he, the call, credit he calls the world. it. They surprised everybody in the stadium, including the three of us in this booth. Atlanta had nobody over there to get the ball. As you see, Seattle has two or three people going after it. I and finally, Keith Simpson, I think, Keith 42, Simpson. Re re recovered it. And field position for the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Jack's ahead. rather proud of himself. <laughs> ahead of the NFC, 20-9, to 9, an interconference competition. I have to believe the AFC plays more enterprising football, among other things. First and 10 at the 43-yard line. Blitz, Zorn unloads it in the direction of Largent, saves the loss. It'll be second and 10. Jim Zorn, Dallas had him in 75. They released him just before the season started. Went out, flirted around with Los Angeles during the 75 season, then was signed as a free agent by Seattle, and he has had a remarkable rise in his career ever since. And, well, that, and that blitzer, Frank, was number 28, Frank Reed, a defensive safety man. Atlanta's going to have to go all out with their safety blitzes to have any chance of stopping this offensive machine of Seattle's. First. Time before, they blitzed on a fourth and seven. Zorn ran it in from 34 yards out, so you can be hurt. They show blitz once again on second and ten. They're coming with everybody. Zorn, Largent. Gain of about four. Defensively there, Rick Bias, number 38. I'll tell you, Dallas was very honest about the release of Zorn. 
the brilliant triumvirate Schramm, Brent, Landry, not necessarily in that order. Look at that total offense. The graphic, Seattle has the last 122 yards of that total. Atlanta was hot early on. Seattle, as Frank told you, kept its poise, came back. Point I was making, Dallas did not want to let Zong go. They had no choice. You're and right. They freely admit it. D, they kept back has been sensational for them for the last four years. Preston Person. Right. right. They're going to come after him again. Third down, six. Atlanta showing the blitz. This time they pull out of it. Zarn was affected by it, though. Yeah, that was good. That was good defense. They faked the blitz. They got him into an audible situation, came back out of it. That's the style of defense Atlanta has got to play to have any chance at all against this football team. You're exactly right, and you saw for the first time that Zorn was a troubled quarterback. That's Uncertain that. and made a bad throw that could have been picked off. Exactly right. On fourth down, a friend Herrera has come into the game. Keep in mind, Zorn is the holder. A friend Herrera's longest field goal in his career is 52 yards. This one would be about 54 yards. It would be 55 yards, as a matter of fact. Seconds ticking away on the 32nd clock. They'll have time to get it off. Keep in mind, Zorn, the quarterback, is the holder. That's the bacon. Wide open. Oh! A friend Herrera has a first down inside the 20, and Seattle's doing everything. I, I love it. I want to tell you, folks, this is the kind of play pro football needs. Not parity, but enterprise, inventiveness. Watch number one, Jim Zorn. I mean, uh, F a friend of Herrera go right up the middle. Nobody is covering him that far. Zorn puts it right in there. No problem. A friend of Harris says, I can be a receiver, too. All right. Shows you what surprise can do instead of the stereotype. The same defenses, the same offenses, the same playbooks, only the numerology different. Jack Patera is giving the nation a lesson in oh, creative oh. football. <laughs> All right. First and 10 at the 17-yard line. Larger in motion. Sherman Smith. 50, bit of running by Smith. What do you want, a friend Herrera to go to wide receiver, Howard? <laughs> I don't care what they do with them. I like what's different. The minute a team in this league does something different, the other team is totally messed up. You've got to give Jack Patera a lot of credit. He's made some bold calls tonight, and they've worked for him, which makes him a genius. No, he's been <laughs> watching college football. That was a gain of five by Smith. Five well-earned yards, second down, five. Ball on the 11-yard line. Handoff, Dornick. And the big man moved for a couple of yards as we head towards the two-minute warning. That's the story. It's been exciting football. It was all Atlanta to begin with. They blocked the Herman Weaver punt, took it in for a score. They drove the length of the field, and Seattle kept their poise, came back. They have shown some exciting play. There's the two-minute warning. We'll be back in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts for the driving experience of your life. The thrilling new Datsun 200SX. Gonna drive you like you never been driven. The young new Datsun 200SX. Every bold line sings, open me up and watch my moves. Gonna drive you like you the new Datsun 200SX, five-speed stick, four-wheel disc brakes, and a revolutionary new fuel-injected engine with the best gas mileage in its class. The new Datsun 200SX, soft velour bucket seats, power steering, four-speaker stereo, full carpeting, digital clock, even optional skyroof. The 200SX, youngest Datsun yet. See it today, hard top and hatchback. Gonna drive you like you never been driven. give you the drive of your life. It's the Battle of the Network Stars with Big Ben Patton, Joanna Cassidy, Robert Conrad, Valerie Bertinelli, Ed Asner, and more. Friday on ABC. You have the sense that football is a lot of fun in, up in Seattle. They have a fun coach. He's a tough man. He's been through expansion himself. He wound up his own football career with the Dallas Cowboys. He knows what it's all about. He'll have a good joke with you. You wouldn't want to mess around with him too much. You might get a little angry. Right now, 
Third down and two. The ball inside the 10-yard line. Seattle pulling all stops out tonight. Whoa! Dornick just pulling into the end zone. Oh, oh, oh. Dan Dornick, touchdown Seattle. They take the lead the first time tonight. And the Boombirds go to work on the Falcons, but they shouldn't. They really shouldn't. This Seattle team deserves credit. Not the Falcons blame, because the Falcons started off a fired up, almost frenzied football team. Look at it again. And watch Dorney. Hey, and right ahead of it was Sherman Smith leading the way. That's what you like to see. Two big backs complimenting each other. Smith with the block. Dornick the touchdown. Here's a friend Herrera, the receiver. And the middle wide receiver drills the throw, and Seattle has the lead 21 to 14. Dornick gets the third touchdown for Seattle. We'll be back in a moment. In this room, there are usually nine or ten infants playing, laughing, learning what it feels like to be loved. We can't show you their faces because they are victims of child abuse and neglect. I'm Archery Beeman of the Seattle Seahawks, and this is the Seattle Day Nursery, an agency supported by United Way. Here, they give love back to little children whose parents have agreed to seek help. In many cases, they were often abused or neglected themselves as children. No one knows how many abused children there are. But here in Seattle, there's a small ray of hope, thanks to a lot of volunteers who want to share the meaning of love. Thanks to them, thanks to you. It works for all of us, the United Way. The preceding announcement was brought to you by Autry Beeman and the National Football League as a public service. 154 remaining in the first half. Exciting football, fun football. Seattle now out in front, 21 to 14. A friend Herrera, who set the last touchdown up with a reception over the middle on a fake field goal, set to kick off. And it's dinked along the ground, taken there by Pridemore. And Pridemore. Upended, hustling down there defensively for Seattle was Jesse Green. He made the stop, and Atlanta was having the problems. Why didn't they let it go out of bounds, Frank? Well, I wasn't down there with him. I don't know <laughs> whether it's a very wet field. That ball doesn't bounce as much as it ordinarily would. We saw it earlier on a punt that died inside the five. The conditions change. How about that second quarter graphic? All Seattle. What a comeback. This is the fifth play Atlanta's run during the second quarter. They have the ball at their own 16-yard line. Bartkowski. And under pressure, he had to dump it off. Under pressure by number 71, Frank Carlella, and he got his big old paw in front of Bartkowski's face, and he couldn't see his receiver. There he Watch is. He's been around 16 years. Most of them with you, Fran. He's something special. Watch him get his hands up. He's six foot six. He gets his arms up. He knows what to do when he gets back there, and he can still rush the passer. There he is. Great player, Carl Eller. And a real leader on this football team now. Traded yeah. right before the start of the season. Came from Minnesota in exchange for offensive tackle Steve Niehaus. Who they cut. Second down, 10. Motion man, Wallace Francis. Barkowski again. Again, under pressure. Short hop there, incomplete. Flags are down. Bill Gregory, that time, was in there defensively, a former Dallas Cowboy performing defensively for the Seahawks. To use the back. old cliche, Gregory is a play. Lehman Bennett, not happy with the ebb and flow of this game, elated early on. What a change. The illegal motion on the offense, number unreported, refused. So that brings up third down. Seattle declining the penalty. They like to get it back. They have two timeouts. Third down, 10. Does it look to 16. You, does it look to you, Frank, like they're out of rhythm, out of sync out there on offense now, the Falcons? Well, we saw it earlier when the early going, it was Seattle that appeared that way. They put it back together. We'll see what Atlanta can do. Well, again, back. Carl Eller, Barkowski gets away. A flag is down. The they intercepted away. 
They intercepted and Ellis. Bat, but a flag is down downfield. We don't know whether it's against Atlanta or Seattle. I think it was Carl Eller who batted it and then caught it. He certainly did. What is the thing? Holding. Oh. Defensive holding. Automatic first down. What a break for Atlanta. I think it might have been Bill Cook who got his hand on it. Eller came up with it. In any event, it doesn't matter. That'll be an automatic first for the Falcons. But the, let's listen to the official's call. Defensive holding, number 38. First down, Cornell Webster, the cornerback, holding for Seattle. Ella's giving O'Brien all he wants at that right tackle spot. And <laughs> off Lynn Kane. And Kane gets a first down for Atlanta. Nifty bit of running. And Atlanta has called timeout, and we're going to go with Howard. He's with a very special guest on this night. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the new manager of the New York Yankees, Mr. Dick Hauser. A, congratulations. B, is it or is it not true that three summers ago, you were offered in Gabe Paul's apartment the job as the Yankee manager to succeed Billy Martin in the wake of the Jackson Martin incident at Fenway Park. Howard, that's not true. I want to discuss some some things with Gabe, as you know quite well. You live in the same apartment complex, and uh, we discussed personnel and we discussed Billy. But uh, I tried to talk Gabe into, into keeping Billy. We didn't talk about my, me being hired. We tried to talk about keeping Billy, and I said if we keep Billy, we get healthy, we can win the pennant. And we did that year. Your loyalty to Martin has always remained firm, hasn't it? Yes, it has. He's a good friend of mine. He's a great manager. What are your problems as you foresee them with the Yankees? One or two players that we need in, in certain areas, probably center field, maybe behind the plate. We've only just begun with this fine gentleman. And we'll get back to him right after this play. Yep. Atlanta, 124. They have the football first and 10. The ball at the 34-yard line. They're down by seven points. Bartkowski. Strong arms it. Going for Jenkins. And it's picked off. Picked off by Dave Brown, who was back there in double coverage by Seattle. He had help back there from Archery Beeman, who they just moved to free safety a couple weeks ago. And Archery Beeman put it up. That's Alfred Jenkins, and he can run. He's one of the faster men in football. But you'll see Archery Beeman come into the play here from the right of your screen. He will get up and tip the ball up, and Dave Brown will make the interception. There's Beeman going up off his shoulder pads. Dave Brown makes a nice reaction, intercepts the ball. Now, will Seattle sit on it, or will they go after it? The way they've been playing, I think they might go after it. The ball at the 12-yard line. There's a look at Dave Brown. Started every game that Seattle has ever played. He's a maligned ball player. He was the number one draft choice. Out of Michigan by the Pittsburgh Steelers. John McKay had him with the All-Stars. Didn't think he could make it. Well, he's made it with Seattle. 115, and Seattle has two timeouts. Hand off is Dan Dorney. Gain of two, it'll be second down and eight. Let's go quickly back to Howard. Okay, we're back with Dick Housen. Now, Dick, you said you need one or two players. Who and where? Well, possibly in center field, possibly behind the plate. I don't know those people right now, but there's some people available, and, and we've discussed personnel already, and, and I think uh, George Steinbrenner is committed to, to bringing in some players in New York and help the ball club. Controversy has always been the yardstick of the Yankees in the Steinbrenner regime, particularly involving Reggie Jackson. You stood firm behind Billy in the Reggie Jackson interludes. How do you feel about Jackson now? Well, I've thrown a lot of batting practice to Reggie. I hope he appreciates that. We get along very well, really, and he had a fine offensive year last year, and I hope he... He continues into 80 and have, have, have another good season because he had a good deal. Talk to you later. Thank you very much, Dick. Dick Hauser, the new manager of the Yankees, back to Giff and the play-by-play. -play. And as Dornick picks up a couple of yards, third down and seven, uh, Dick Hauser, nice young man. He'll age considerably. <laughs> I don't luck, think Dick. so. I've known Dick since 1961 when at Kansas City made the all-rookie team. This is a peppery guy and a fighter. And he's not going to age. Atlanta calls timeout on this occasion. Don't forget about our halftime gift. Willie Mays, Bowie Kuhn. Bowie with some interesting comments about the Billy Morton situation. And huh? two dancing bears, a seal with the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to miss halftime at the big top. 
Third down and seven. Atlanta stopped the clock. They'd like to get the football back. They'd like a chance to uh, rush the punter again for Seattle Herman Weaver. Jeff, we've seen Seattle make many gambles tonight, but as you and I talked about, they were good calculated risk. This is good to run the clock out here now, but anticipating them to run this ball again and then punt to Atlanta, and I think that's what they should be doing at this particular point of the game with a 21-14 lead. Third and seven, the ball at the 16-yard line. Darn. Hands off. Sherman Smith. Oh, Smith has got the first down. Out to the 24-yard line. The second's ticking away now. Neither team inclined, I don't believe, to stop the clock at this point. Saddle deep in their own territory. Atlanta realizing Saddle has the first down. They'll let the first half expire. Interesting, exciting first half. We hope you've enjoyed it. Interesting halftime coming up. So stay with us. We'll be returning in just a moment. Well, they finally built the Sony big enough for me. Sony has risen to the challenge of the Mahoney family. Grandma, what a big Sony you have. Sony introduces the big Sony, the 26-inch Trinitron console, the biggest television screen in America. But the big news isn't that it's so big. The big news is that it's a Sony. Kind of reminds me of my Sony. Sony, the one and only. I like competing against men. But only if they don't patronize me. Then if I win, it's really exciting. You know what else I find exciting? Men who wear English leather cologne. I like the way it smells on men. And I like the kind of men who wear it. I find them to be challenging. When it comes to the battle of the sexes, I don't like pushovers. I guess that's why all my men wear English leather. Or they wear nothing at all. Next August, I'll be an air traffic controller. Guaranteed. Ten months from now, I'll be training in electronics. Guaranteed. Even if you're still in school, you can join the Army now and take up to 12 months to report for duty. With your choice of training, guaranteed in writing. Next September, I'll be in Europe. Guaranteed. This is the Army, and we're giving guarantees. Call this toll-free number now. Joe's the unhappy day is an actor puts the squeeze on Marion. Well, bloody duh. And guess who comes knocking at the door? It ain't opportunity. Then on Angie, a burglar breaks in. But it's more than money he's after. Tomorrow. Good evening, I'm Beverly Byer. The Seattle City Council is voting to go ahead with an environmental impact statement on the Copper Creek Dam project. We'll have details on that tonight after the movie. You'll look like a million dollars. And you'll save hundreds at the million dollar fur sale at Frederick & Nelson. Save 20 to 50% on every fur in Frederick & Nelson's downtown fur salon. Save on fur coats, jackets, and designer sport furs. Shop early for the best selection of mink, fox, lamb, raccoon, beaver, and more. All 20 to 50% off at the Frederick & Nelson million dollar fur sale. It's happening now. Frederick & Nelson's biggest fur event this year. KOMO Seattle. We're back live. The score here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium is Seattle 21, Atlanta 14 at halftime. Our halftime features are being brought to you by Metropolitan. Metropolitan really stands by you with insurance. I'll complete in just a moment as I tell you how the scoring went. First, Lynn Kane on a 35-yard run. Mazzetti the kick, 7-0 Atlanta. Rick Byers, 30 yards on what was officially called a fumble return. Really, it looked like a block kick against Thunderfoot Weaver, 14 to nothing Atlanta. Then Jim Zorn, 34-yard run. Herrera's kick, 14-7. Sherman Smith, four-yard pass from Zorn. Herrera kick, tie. And then Dan Dornink, eight-yard run, 21 to 14. So, Metropolitan really stands by you with insurance for your life, health, auto, home, and retirement. Folks, there were two overriding stories in sports this weekend. Thus, we're forsaking the halftime highlights to cover them. First, the disassociation from baseball of one of its greatest, the Hall of Fame of Willie Mays. Second, the dismissal of Billy Morton as Yankee manager and the employment of Dick Hauser as his successor. Willie Mays had a 10-year contract with the Mets, two years to go on it, part-time coach, scout, and PR man. And then 
he agreed to a 10-year contract with Bally's Park Place Hotel, a hotel to be opened by the end of November or shortly thereafter in Atlantic City with a casino gambling venture included within that hotel. Mays would work for 10 years for them at $100,000 a year, $500 a month expenses, a two-bedroom apartment, security apparently for a lifetime. Bowie Kuhn said that Mays could not have such a position and stay associated with baseball. It would be against baseball's best interests. At a press conference held today after he had met with the commissioner for one hour, Willie Mays spoke of that meeting with the commissioner and his adopted position. What can I say now? Uh, looks like I'm being formed out uh, to a uh, worthwhile group. I uh, had a meeting with the commission today. Uh, I think he said in the best interest of baseball that uh, I should dis, uh, I guess disengage myself with the Mets. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going with a wonderful group. I uh, know that uh, these people are very much behind me. I know they're going to be very good to my family. I hate to leave baseball, but I'm not, the way I understand it to the commissioner, I'm not leaving baseball uh, uh, totally. I will be playing in, uh, I guess, in the uh, old-timers old games, uh, whatever baseball have to offer uh, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, I am not going to challenge baseball by saying that uh, baseball is wrong. I, I think it's very important that I take care of my family, and I thank the people that are here with me are done just that. Uh, I think it's very important that my wife and I are happy, and the, all of the decision today was the commission, and I provide by, by that. Earlier, I spoke to Bowie Kuhn. Bowie, you really can stir up a fuss. The Payson family owns the Mets. They've had interests in thoroughbred racing. John Galbraith owns the world champion Bucks. He also owns the Darby Dan Farm, thoroughbred racing. George Steinbrenner, principal owner of the Yankees. He also owns horses, stables them down at his farm in Ocala. Isn't it inconsistent, then, for you to allow those owners to retain their ownership interest in thoroughbred racing, which is legalized gambling, and yet to determine that Willie Mays is acting against the best interests of baseball in taking a PR job with a legalized gambling operation. Howard, uh, there are both owners and players who have been involved in, in thoroughbred racing. When I came into baseball in 1969 as commissioner, what I was faced with was a situation where the prior commissioners, including Judge Landis to a limited extent and the other commissioners to a greater extent, had accepted uh, ownership and players being involved in horse racing. What I decided when I came in was that we should not go any farther with this kind of affiliation. That we ought to say there's got to be a line drawn somewhere. And in the first few months that I was commissioner, I found that uh, a number of our owners and two clubs were involved in stock ownership, nothing sinister about it, in a corporation that had casinos. And I said, fellas, I don't think this is a good thing for baseball. I think you ought to give it up. And they proceeded voluntarily, all of them, to give it up. So I hadn't been commissioner more than five months, I guess, before I made it clear. I thought you've got to draw the line someplace because our integrity is the key thing we've got, and I think we, we had to draw it. But, Bowie, how would Mays, serving 10 days a month, as a PR man, in effect, for a publicly held corporation, after all, which is subject to government regulation, the New Jersey State Gaming Commission, the SEC, and so on, how would he be affecting deleteriously the integrity of baseball? I think the, the question is one of the image of the game. I think the more you get involved in gambling interests, the more problems you're going to face, the more suspicion you're going to create for the game. Uh, it seems to me that we have got to be very tough about this. Nothing could be tougher than to have the case come up in 1979 involving one of the greatest stars we've ever had and one of the guys that I have the greatest affection for in our game. But I think if you ignore these things, if you don't draw tough lines and say, look, we just can't go over this line, we can't go this far, uh, then you're going to have trouble. I think the public perception of baseball is going to suffer, and it's my job to protect that integrity and to protect that perception, and I intend to do it. Well, you've just spoken of your affection for Mays. Roy Campanella once said to play baseball, you've got to have a little boy in you. And if anybody has ever typified that in the history of the game, it's Willie Mays. 
Don't you tarnish him by this action? Howard, I don't think so, and certainly I don't intend to. Uh, I'm making it very clear. I made it very clear to Willie that it was his choice. He could, he could go with the casino operation if he wanted to, obviously. But if he did, he had to make an election between that and baseball. I'm also making it abundantly clear in talking to the media about the situation that Willie has in no way done anything wrong. I don't blame Willie for making the decision that he has made, the election that he has made. Willie is looking to his own long-term interest. These people are, are taking good care of Willie for a long period of time. Uh, he's made that decision, and I understand it. But I've got to stand where baseball ought to be, too. Metropolitan really stands by you. One, two, three. Glad I'm insured by Metropolitan, because Metropolitan will really stand by me. Metropolitan really stood by me, so now I have the dream house I always dreamed of. Two daughters, double wedding, Metropolitan really stood by me. For insurance for life, home, car, health and retirement. Metropolitan really stands by you. Turning for a moment to the Billy Martin case, is it true, sir, that you're still investigating that? Yes, it is. Judge Steinbrenner has fed information to me to the effect that he still feels deeply about Billy and indeed looks forward to creating some, time, some kind of business association mm -hmm. for Billy. Mm -hmm. Would you do anything to block that? No, I, I think George is very sincere in his concern about Billy Martin. Uh, Billy has got problems. There are financial problems. He's had some personal problems also in terms of his getting into fights and trouble when he's been drinking. Uh, George is uh, sincerely dedicated, I believe, to trying to help uh, Billy through this, to try to help him find financial opportunities outside of the game, where Billy might have a better climate to solve some of these difficulties. Then what is it you're still investigating in the Martin case? Well, I want to I wanna be sure that I have all of the facts. I think I'm pretty close to having them, but uh, in addition to getting all the facts, I want to give the uh, Yankees a chance, as I have, to see how they're going to handle this to draw out a plan. George has not at this point come forward with any a final plan about how he wants to handle it, but he has talked to me with some ideas along the lines you and I are just talking about now. I like the sound of that. Uh, how I will resolve my end of it uh, remains to be seen, but what I want to do is, uh, is put uh, Billy in a situation where he will have a feeling that he had really better stay away from these kinds of problems in the future if he wants to have a future in the game. Do you expect to bar Martin from baseball, yes or no? I'm not going to answer that yes or no. I've got a variety of options open to me, Howard. I can suspend a man for varying periods of time. I can fine. I can put a man on probation. I can reprimand a man. All of these things are obviously things I have to consider, and I am considering. Thank you very much for coming into our studio. Nice to be with you, Harry. Take care. Metropolitan really stands by you. I'm running a small business and a large family by myself, and Metropolitan really stands by me. If Joey goes to medical school someday, I'll be glad I'm insured by Metropolitan, because Metropolitan will really stand by me. We planned early for retirement, and Metropolitan really stood by us. For insurance for retirement, home, car, health, and life. Metropolitan really stands by you. Saturday, doubleheader action. First headlining regional games. An exciting Eastern contest as Syracuse battles highly ranked Pittsburgh. Undefeated in third ranked Ohio State tackles Illinois. SMU goes against Texas A&M. The Cinderella team of 79, Wake Forest, battles Clemson. And Yale takes on Cornell for Ivy Honors. Then at 4 Eastern, Arizona State fighting to keep its Rose Bowl hopes alive battles Stanford. Central Michigan takes on Toledo and Temple against Hawaii. Check local listings for all the excitement. Saturday on ABC. We're live at halftime in Atlanta. It was all Atlanta initially in this game. Seattle came back, maintained their poise. They now have a 21 to 14 lead. The teams are taking the field, and ABC's NFL Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Dotson, who invites you to test drive the all-new 200 SX Sport Coupe. It'll drive you like you've never been driven at your Dotson dealer now. We'll be ready for the second half kickoff after a word from our local station. Stay with us. Six more excitement coming your way. Tuesday on Three's Company, an overnight guest is messing up Jack's love life. Then it's double love at first sight for Bobby and Tony. Dump the both of them. On Taxi. 
And on Heart to Heart, a swinging couple gets involved in murder, and Jonathan and Jennifer are next on the list. October. Now, right now, it's the great Pioneer Month at Jafco. And we're rolling out some of our best prices ever on top Pioneer components, like Pioneer's powerful SX680 stereo receiver. On sale now for a low $169. Or hook up with the popular CTF500 stereo cassette deck, a Pioneer Month special at just $119. The superstars in stereo are priced to go fast during the great Pioneer Month sale at Jafco. The best things happen at Jafco. The right flavors can make ordinary food great. Hi, I'm Bob Robertson to tell you about Crescent Foods. You see, Crescent makes the products that flavor other foods and make them great. Now, who cooks with Crescent? The finest hotels and restaurants, like Ivers, Clinker Dagger, and in Spokane, the Rid Pack. Now, folks like that depend on Crescent. You can, too. Crescent is the word for flavor. KOMO Seattle. Seattle over Atlanta. They have done it with guile. They have done it with daring. They went on a fourth and seven. The ball at the 34-yard line. Atlanta came with the blitz. Jim Dorn took it in 34 yards out. They came back with an onside kick. And now Tim Massetti will set it up for Atlanta as we prepare to begin the second half. Again, it was 14 to nothing for Atlanta. They are fighting desperately with New Orleans and Los Angeles in the Western Division of the NFC. As we look at the two deep men dropping for the Seattle Seahawks, Jeff Moore, 32, a rookie from Jackson State, a 12th round draft pick. And Tony Green, who was sensational with the Redskins a year ago, lost his touch somewhere along the line, now attempting to regain it at Seattle. Ready to begin. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cassell and Fran Tarkenton. Jeff Moore. And Moore kicks it into overdrive, moves out over the 35-yard line, where Seattle will have a first and 10. We're anticipating Jim Zorn at quarterback, Dan Dorning. One setback, 33, Sherman Smith, the other number 47. They are alternating with a two tight end offense. Brian Peets is in there. On occasion, they'll bring him out, and they'll bring in Steve Rabel, who's been effective. Three wide receivers. Jim Zorn. Your basic average night for a very gifted athlete. They mark it at the 35-yard line. First and 10. Sherman Smith handles on the first play. Turns to the inside over the right side. Squeezes out a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Defensively for Atlanta. Smith, the rookie for Miami at one end. Yates at the other end. Edgar Fields, Wilson Bambuino. At the other tackle, Robert Pennywell in the middle, Greg Brezina, Fulton Kuykendall, the linebacker, Roland Lawrence, Rick Bias are the cornerbacks. It'll be Tom Pridemore and Frank Reed at safety. Second down and eight. Ball at the 37-yard line. Steve Largent. Split to the left. Sam McCullum, top of your screen. Those are the wide receivers for Seattle. Jordan has the time. Man is open. And he connects. It's McCullum. And McCullum has a first down. He's inside Atlanta territory. And when you give Zorn the time, he'll get his receivers open and he can put it on a string. And he really goes right back to it, doesn't he, Fran? Look at McCullum, isolated. He really does. Sam McCullum makes a stiff arm here. Pretty good run of the football. He went to Seattle in the expansion draft as you looked at Sam McCullum from the Minnesota Vikings. Good receiver in Minnesota. And doing a good job for the Seattle Seahawks. Zorn has got him moving again. Atlanta better stiffen up that defense. Single coverage on McCullough that time. Double coverage on Largent. Even when Largent is not receiving the ball, he is a force. Handoff is Dorning. And the big man gets about three yards. Give him four. It'll be second down and six. Robert Pennywell in on the stop. And a big one coming up next Monday night, critical to the standings in the AFC East and Central. The oil is against the Dolphins, the two teams, Frank, that gave us the best Monday night football game, I think, in the history of the series. 35-31 last year, Houston over Miami. And boy, did Baltimore help Miami yesterday. Yes, but Dolphins riddled by injuries yesterday. Just riddled by them. 
Second down, call it five. The ball at the 32-yard line. Handoff, Dornick. Ball is loose. And that is all over. And Atlanta gets the turnover. That's the break they needed. Yates, Jeff Yates at the bottom of that pile. That's exactly what they needed to break the momentum of the Seattle team. Dorney coughs it up, and Atlanta, trailing by seven, will have the football. Good field position. We'll be back in Atlanta in just a moment. You can own number one. The Datsun 280ZX is the most popular sports car in the world. Winningest car in its class. Fuel-injected 2.8-liter engine. Four-wheel disc brakes. Full track certified instrumentation. All for thousands less than its reputation. Take number one off the track and you're driving number one on the road. The 280ZX. Test price it today. To give you the best for less. Time for milk. Any meal is a right time for milk. A glass of milk makes a meal taste fine. is pleasing as can be a great big glass of milk really makes the meal a great big glass of milk really makes the meal your favorite television stars up to their necks in fun <laughs> lots to look at friday night in the battle of the network stars on abc the question now for atlanta they get the turnover on this play they'll have the ball at the 32 dornick the ball carrier he met a stone wall. This is Jeff Yates making the tackle. He strips him. The ball's going to come back, and 79 is going to make the recovery. That's a football play, and Atlanta needed that. For the whole second quarter, we see Jeff Yates, and he's happy. They've been dominated by the Seahawks. This is a break they needed, as Howard mentioned. The ball at Atlanta's 33-yard line. Trailing 21 to 14. We're in the third quarter. Handoff is Kane. And the rookie. He picked up a 35-yard touchdown in the first quarter over the right side for a yard, a yard and a half. It'll be second and eight. An action-packed football game, but a point that must be made. We had asked Billy Martin to come on, emotionally undone and quite understandably by the chain of events, he couldn't. But there are some points that Judge Saper, his attorney, asked me to make about Billy Martin. He does not think that the problem in Minnesota was the cause of the dismissal of Martin. He thinks the other party... A man named Cooper was trying to protect himself. He says that Martin was baited and humiliated in the incident. More later. Second down and eight. Barkowski, Mitchell, the tight end. I think we got a holding penalty, Frank. Flag down at the line of scrimmage. That's usually where you get it. Mitchell takes the football down to the 40-yard line. They're going to bring it back. Important point right here, though. Barkowski has got to work his tight end. Mitchell, he's got to work his two running backs against the linebackers of Seattle. He's been trying to get downfield too much to his outside receivers. That was a good play call, a good throw. All those can be nullified with the holding penalty. He's got to do more of that to give Atlanta a chance offensively. Jeffrey Bob Frederick. Offensive holding, number 68, second down. Thielman, the right guard. Number 68, you see him working against Robert Hardy, holding, pulling Hardy to the ground, nullifying a game that would have put the ball first and 10 at Seattle's 40-yard line. But then again, you could say he might have preserved his quarterback for another day. Ball at the 25-yard line. Second down, 18. Andrews, single setback. The rookie from Auburn. Barkowski with the roll. Looking for Wallace Francis. He's covered. And Barkowski will go down. Manny Tiasasupo. Tiasasupo made the stop. Cornell Webster. Uh, their Hardy was in there defensively with Tiasasupo. Cornell Webster doing a good job on Wallace Francis. Nowhere for Barkowski to put it. As we looked at Robert Hardy, Howard, we saw him in the exhibition game against the Cowboys this year. Tenth round draft choice. Out of Jackson State, we thought then he was going to be an excellent That's right. tackle, and, and he is. And Seattle, a team built with, well, some great trades, some high-round draft choices, a lot of low-round draft choices, and a horde of free agents. A loss of a couple. Third down, 21. Ball resting right at the 20-yard line. Our 
Gronkowski. Incomplete intended for Jenkins. He could have caught it. It would have been a super catch. He still would have been short of the first down. And so Atlanta has to turn the ball over. And let's see if Seattle can recapture its offensive charge. Atlanta failed to take advantage of its opportunity. They brings on John James, who does the punting for Atlanta. And this is Tony Green. Respecting James to the extent of his own 35-yard line. The catch called for by Green. Successfully made at the 37-yard line. 43-yard punt by John James, and we'll be returning to Atlanta in just a moment. For those parents who realize that $500 isn't too much to spend to expand their child's world, Radio Shack has the perfect gift. The TRS-80 computer, the most significant investment a parent can make. Programs for your child's education or your business, finance, and home use. Let your children discover tomorrow's technology today. The TRS-80, the biggest name in little computers. Only at Radio Shack, a Tandy company. Harvey Firestone once used a fleet of taxi cabs to prove his tire. The cabs rolled up a lot of miles every day, and Harvey thought that was a good way to judge a tire. Well, that hasn't changed very much. Now it works on the road, it's still a pretty good way to judge a tire. And right now, American drivers are rolling up over 160 million miles every day on Firestone's 721 radio. Now, Harvey would say that ought to tell you something about the 721. Sunday at a special time, 8.30, 7.30 Central and Mountain, Jaws is coming. Atlanta, they got the turnover. They were unable to move the football. Seattle, first and 10. Ball at the 37-yard line. Largent, split to the left. Rabel up to the right. Largent beats the 30-second clock as he changes it off. Going for Largent. And what a catch. Largent inside the 15-yard line. And what a call by Zorn. Don't he you. almost got called for delay of game, but he obviously changed it off and picked up Largent. All right, here's a little play pass action. Jim looks it off to the right. And we watch Rick Bias come into the play. He's going to make a play for the ball, misjudges it. And Largent adjusts to the ball beautifully, makes a great catch. Watch Lodgen again. Zorn got hit just as he threw it. The more you watch the Seattle team, regardless of the one and lost record, they lost their games early on. Tough schedule. You have to like this team and the way they play the game. They never let up offensively. You know, Bias just overplayed that. He had an easy play on the ball, anticipating, I don't know where he saw the ball, 53-yard pick up. The ball at the 10-yard line. Bias had good position on it. Just misplayed it. Lodgen in motion. And off is Sherman Smith. Smith. Kyle driving forward for a couple. Frank, you're absolutely right. Bias did have good position on the ball, but he's been a beleaguered cornerback this he year. He really has. He's gotten ripped by the press here in town. He's had a tough time. A lot of heat. at the nine-yard line, so it'll be second and nine. Let's look for the pass on this play. Argent at the top of your screen now, split to the right. McCollum in motion, and off right up the middle. It's Dornick, and he's pounded there after a gain of a couple. It'll be third down and six. They, they should have gone to the pass there, Howard. And Dornick is leaving the game. Came out of that pile up limping. And that should produce Al Hunter, an All-American a few years ago at Notre Dame. That's a kid who looked like he had super potential. And the Seattle people tell you flatly that he just hasn't lived up to. Hunter, I mean. Third down, the ball at the seven-yard line. Argent split again to the right. Hunter is number 24. He's going to throw to the outside receiver over here. Hangs it up. Out towards McCullum incomplete. And we will see a friend Herrera. 
the gifted and noted receiver of the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> Oh, I love that play. That, to me, was the highlight of the season. In case you missed it, on a 54-yard field goal set, it was Jim Zorn throwing over the middle for a first down to a friend Herrera in the first half. You may yet see Premian in that role. After all, he tried to be a passer. So did Irk's legend. <laughs> 24-yard attempt. Zorn the holder. And it's good. Seattle extends their lead over Atlanta, 24. To 14. We'll be back in Atlanta in just a moment. Now, the trick is, in just three moves, they get the light bottle caps all together, moving two each time. Once, twice, three. What? That's easy. Hey, I could put away a lot of beer by the time they figure this one out. That's why I'm drinking light beer from Miller. Not only does light taste great, but it's got a third less calories than their regular beer. And it's less filling. Hey, what's going on here? Okay, once more. One, two, three. What? That's easy. Let me in. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. That's Coach Johnson. He's from the college. Looks like he's worried about his problem dandruff. I wish he'd ask me. Mr. Owens, I need a shampoo. Never tried Tegrin. Can it really work on my itching and flaking? Well, in a national survey, three out of four dermatologists judge Tegrin's medication effective in fighting even problem dandruff. Mm -hmm. I'll give it a tryout. <laughs> hey, how's that dandruff problem? Tegrin's a winner, Mr. Owens. Prove it to yourself. Tegrin works. Saturday, top regional action. First, Syracuse-Pittsburgh, Ohio State-Illinois, plus other games. Then, Arizona State-Stanford headlines later games. Check local listings on ABC. Seattle over Atlanta, 24-14. to 14. A very important game for both clubs. However, much more important to Atlanta as they try to stay close to New Orleans in the Western Division of the NFC. New Orleans 5-4, and four, Atlanta 3-5. and five. They can move into a tie with the Los Angeles Rams, a game behind New Orleans if they can pull this game out tonight, but they're having tough sledding. Dennis Pearson for Atlanta. And Pearson makes it out close to the 30-yard line. Here Atlanta will have the offensive set again. Frank, we've said that Atlanta's offense has done nothing since the first quarter, but let's give the Seattle Seahawks defense uh, some... some uh, Credit here. They have really played good defensive football. Interesting thing to watch in this series. Will Bartkowski force the ball to the outside receivers, or will he go to the tight end of the backs, which he should be doing? Jenkins, 84. Wallace Francis, 89. Those are the wide receivers. Lynn Kane is in there, 21. William Andrews, 31. Set back for Atlanta. First and 10. The ball resting right at the 30. And turning back to the inside is Lynn Kane, the rookie from USC. And he moves for good yardage, a gain of about eight. Well, we're back to what you said at the start. You see Steve Botkowski in that graphic. Six incompletes, one interception. So he's fallen on odd times, Fran. But they've got to, as Seattle succeeded in doing, keep their poise. They can't get it back immediately. They've got 22 and a half minutes of this game left, 20 a time. Second down, a yard and a half for the first. Alex Francis, bottom of the screen, handoff, goes to Andrews. Andrews has the first down, turns to the inside, spins away. Nifty running by the rookie from Auburn. He's still on his feet. He never does go down. That brings some life to this crowd, who really lost all their spark when Seattle turned this game around midway in the first quarter. Now, this is the William Andrews we saw in the first two weeks of the season. He's going to break tackles on the outside. He's still twisting, turning, getting yardage. That is good running. Tremendous balance. Both of these running backs, Kane and Andrews, want to run tonight. Give them the ball and let them go. He gets the first down for Atlanta. The ball right at midfield. Crowd snapping out of it. They know how important this game is to the Falcons. Kane following Andrews. Flag is down. Where it usually is followed by an offensive call. Kane getting inside the 45-yard line, and yeah, the flag is down. This time it's indicated against Seattle. And now the crowd is coming to life, <laughs> and now Atlanta is using those buckends. Ken and Bryant, and they're pouring through the line on the ground. 
and they're using those two young rookie running backs who are fresh and ready to run. Jim Mitchell being offered the option by referee Bob Frederick. And the rain starts to <laughs> come down again, and the umbrellas go up. You'll see a picture of that in a moment. Here's the call. Defense, number 71, offside. Still first down. Eller was offside. The penalty was accepted. There was a gain by Kane of about six. They take the five-yard penalty. The down remains the same as first and five. This is Kane once again. Another flag is down. Kane has. That has got to be offensive holding. And that will hurt Atlanta. Kane was up close to a first down. And now it will be marked off against the Falcons. 7-08 remaining in the third quarter. Not a terrible situation for Bartkowski. He's got first and 15. He's still got three downs to get the 15 yards. Don't try to get it all in one down. Just listen to the referee's call. First down. We did not pick up the Atlanta Falcon who was holding. Down remains the same, however. It'll be first and 15. Ball at the 45-yard line, and the rain is falling. Wallace Francis splits to the right. Bartkowski to the air. This is Andrews. And Andrews gets about four of it back. Upended there by Sammy Green defensively for Seattle. It'll be second down and 11. Lucky Andrews, and did he erupt on the pro football scene? Remember that great day against New Orleans, opening of the season? 167 yards. Atlanta rolling off two successive big wins over New Orleans, then Philadelphia. Then they lost five of the last six as they were knocked off by winless Detroit, knocked off last week by winless San Francisco. On second and 11. Andrews. Brought there by Bill Gregory and Brought down, but not until he had picked up yardage. Moving to the 45, where it'll be third and five. All right, up to now in this series, good, smart play calling. They didn't try to get it all in one down. They come to a third and five situation. I believe that's an advantage for the offense. Well, they're attacking is where Seattle is weak over the first eight games. They are next to last in the American Football Conference against the rush. And you're seeing Atlanta use the ground game. They're not that far out of it. 24 to 14. Kane in motion. Barkowski. Incomplete. Intended there for Jenkins. Big play. Big play. And Barkowski, give him credit. He put the ball right on the numbers. Jenkins did not come up with the play. You'll watch him here. Not bad coverage by Webster either. Not bad. He ran a little curl in pattern. The ball is going to be delivered on time. He'll get hit. Right in the shoulder patch of the ball, it bounces off. Should have made the play. Pretty clear, wasn't it? Yes, it was. There's Cornell Webster. John James comes on on fourth down. Tony Green positions himself in the middle of the field. James tries to come back with what he was successful with earlier, but this time Tony Green calls for and makes the fair catch at the 13-yard line. So once again, Seattle has turned Atlanta back. They'll have the football at the 13 when we return to Atlanta in a moment. Bruce Jenner for the Minolta XG1. The Minolta XG1 35 millimeter camera is so automatic, I can keep taking pictures while my friend Bill rides his bike from shadow to sunlight. The XG1 changes the exposure, not just automatically, but continuously. Minolta's continuous automatic exposure system helps give you the pictures you never thought you could take at a price you never thought you could afford. The Minolta XG1, the automatic choice in automatic cameras. Women of America, are you in charge? I'm in charge. I'm in charge. I'm the boss. I'm in charge. Master Charge wants to give you all the clout you're working for. So when you shop, you can say... I'm in charge. That's real clout. When you carry Master Charge, you carry clout. I'm not president of the company yet, but I'm still in charge. 
That'll tell you something. Jim Zorn having a big night. He has the Seattle Seahawks out in front of the Atlanta Falcons. 24-14, 6.07 remaining in the third quarter. Zorn brings the Seahawks up. First and 10 at their own 13-yard line. The tight end. Brian Peach back in, number 88. Dornick and Sherman Smith with setbacks. Dornick, who went out limping a short while ago, back in the offensive lineup for Seattle. Play action fake by Zorn. Hangs it up for Sherman Smith, and he was in a sprint with Greg Brezina, and Brezina was right with him. Zorn had to overthrow. I think our fans can see Seattle's not just going to be content to sit on a 10-point lead. They're going after it. Good play calling. That's the key to that play all night, under the leadership of that man, Jim Zorn. Now what they want to do is get the ball out of danger, not give up field position, work the clock at the same time, because even though there are still 21 minutes of football left, they are 10 ahead, and they know that's enough time for a lead like 10 points quickly to dissipate. Second down, 10. Dorn, 11 of 18, 167 yards. 97 yards for Largen on four receptions. Atlanta, thinking pass, they get the run. Sherman Smith. The end of a yard, a yard and a half. It'll be third down and eight. Heikendall defensively there for the Falcons, along with Yates. This is a point in time where every series, as you know, Fran, is critical. Right along about here. It really is, and it's more critical for Atlanta than Seattle at this time, as Lehman Venice yelling encouragement there to his team. Atlanta needs field position. Their offense really hasn't done anything for a long time. If they can hold them here, they'll get field position. On the other hand, Seattle would like to keep the ball and keep it away from Atlanta. Interesting confrontation right here. Big play. Ball resting right at the 15-yard line. Third and eight. Atlanta showing blitz. Zorn with the long count. Atlanta comes off the blitz. So Argent complete first down. Oh, did Largent he fire that? And still was managed, able to catch the football, gets the first down, out close to the 35-yard line. All right, watch Jimmy Zorn, cool as can be, all the way back near his goal line. You'll watch from the left side, Largent's going to be breaking in. I mean, he drilled that ball. Largent went up, protected the ball. I mean to tell you, that's good football. Here's Steve Largent again. Coming into this game, average 21.5 yards a catch. The little man can play. Goes up, protects the football, catches it in his body. I tell you, that was a super catch. See, that ball is wet. He had a little slip just before he had to go up for the ball, and still he came away with it. Sometimes you look at Largent, and you wonder how he pulls it off. Oh, almost picked off. Roland Lawrence almost came up with it. Largent on a turn in did not come in as far as Zorn anticipated he was coming in, and he, he hit Roland Lawrence right in the hands. Good pressure by the Roland Lawrence there. Good pressure by the Atlanta defense that time. They went back and they blitzed. They must blitz to have a chance. They cannot let. Here we go. We'll see him here. Zorn going back from the eye formation. Going to fake to his deep back. You'll see the blitz coming from the top of your screen. He has to unload it quicker than he would like to. That allows Lawrence to get in position to make an attempt at an interception. He should have caught the ball. Second down, 10. Ball just short of the 35-yard line. Atlanta once again showing the blitz and getting out of it. Darn swarmed under. Frank that, Jeff Yates was in there first. That was a quarterback draw, Frank. He was trying to quarterback draw with the blitz. There's just not much room there. Watch him come back. He's going to take about four steps back, go right back up the middle. Jeff Yates blitzes right into it. And we've seen a lot of Jeff Yates tonight. He's the one who really messed up the play. He took Steve August, the offensive right tackle, and drilled him right back into Zorn. That was 60, the end of it, for your blitz. And your, what appeared to be, I guess it was an actual quarterback draw. Yes, it was. Another big play, Frank. Another big third down play. Third down, 12. Ball up the 32-yard line. They faked the blitz, and that confused him. He was going to call an audible, didn't like what he, what he saw, and he's going back to the sideline to... Using it, side timeout to do so. Well, it can confuse an offense when they haven't seen that much of it. Atlanta jumping in and out of it, hopping in and out of the blitz. Sometimes they come with it, sometimes they don't. Zorn, pretty heady, though. That's probably the right thing to do. You're sitting on a 
Ten point lead. You don't want to get hurt down here. That is Howard Mudd, former great offensive guard for the San Francisco 49ers. Jimmy, don't you know you're not supposed to talk to offensive linemen and get strategy? But <laughs> Howard Mudd is talking up to the booth to Jerry Rome, a former quarterback, and that makes sense, Howard. I'll tell you this, Jerry Rome, as, as we said during the preseason, prime candidate to become a head coach, a brilliant coach in the development and handling of young quarterbacks. All right, let's training down at Dallas, didn't he? He did indeed. Let's set the stage for this. This is a tough offensive team to defense, Frank. But I think the only chance Atlanta has is to try to put some heat on him and put a, put a blitz on him. If they don't blitz, safety men or whatever, he's going to have too much time to, to throw the ball, and, and his receivers are beating Atlanta defensive backs. They have not been able to pressure him all night without a blitz. Dorn is a very accurate passer. He has Largent, Rabel, and McCullum, three wide receivers. Largent comes out to the left. McCullum in the slot. Rabel split to the right. Third down, 13. The ball at the 32-yard line. Safety blitz. There's a safety blitz. There they go. And, and they McCullum. got him. Incomplete. Seattle will have to punt the football. Greg Brazina in there pressuring Zorn with help from the spread. Should have been doing this all game, friend. I, I hate to belabor the point, but watch the roughs here. 27 up the middle to safety blitz. At least Brazina open on the outside because they do not have a tight end. Jimmy had to throw the ball. Actually, if the line of defensive back plays the ball, he would have intercepted the ball and run it back for a touchdown. That's their style of play. They better stay with it if they want to stop the Seattle offense or have any chance of it. What it does for Atlanta, it gives them potential good field position. Weaver on the punt for Seattle. Punt block is on. Fake punt. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I do not believe the first down was made. It was Jesse Green, I believe, on... A fourth down attempt, and it was Jesse Green. He caught the ball, uh, short of the first down, and this time the gamble did not that's work. That's what I mean by a bad late time gamble. You've got a 10-point lead. You're down to 3.30 in the third quarter. Why give Atlanta field position? You know, I, I hate to be one to cause it after the play happened, but that was not a calculated risk. They never they had, are when they don't work. Well, they had 12 yards to go. They've got a lead. They've already tried a lot of gimmick plays tonight, and they've worked. That's one too many. That was not a good call. No, it was a very bad call. The ball at the 41-yard line. Seattle's 41-yard line. Atlanta possession. Wallace Francis split right. This is Kane. And the youngster goes forward. He has a gain of about seven. Let's face it, Fran. Game situation should control calls. Gambling calls. They really should, and there's Jack Patera. And, and the other calls that were made, if they hadn't have worked, they wouldn't have hurt them so bad. Atlanta's been doing That's nothing the offensively. They've given them a chance now to come back and, and with excellent field position, if anything's going to fire up Atlanta, that call will. Now it's the burdens on the Atlanta office to bring them in. Uh, you're right. Field position, game situation. One Second. of those earlier calls was on the opponent's 34. You couldn't get hurt. Second down three. The ball up to 34-yard line. And off Andrews, big haul. Andrews has the first down. He's battling for more. Gets close to the 25. And with that gambling ball that fell, look at the fire suddenly in Atlanta. What they've been waiting for. And the crowd, a sellout crowd of over 60,000. We don't know how many have arrived here on a very miserable night, quite frankly. The rain was supposed to let up. It's been raining on and off since the middle of the first quarter. Crowd alive on first and ten. Kane gets the call again. Picks up a couple of yards, giving three. It'll be second down and seven at the 22. Howard Little Cook on the stop. At this end of the field, it's four down territory. They're running the ball good. I would stay right with the run. All they've got to do is average two and a half yards a run for four downs, and they got a first down. They're picking up four and five yards every time they run the ball. They should stay with it. This has been Seattle's weakness throughout the year. Again, next to last in their conference against the rush. And 22nd in the league in total defense. Kane and Andrews alternating. Second down, seven. Quick draw, Kane. Big opening. Kane inside the 10, another Atlanta first down at the nine. 
have been brought to life by that unbelievable call. And here's the rookie from Southern Cal, and he's a hot back. Give him the ball. Big, big hole. Good blocking by the offensive line in the middle. Jeff Van Noe, Thielman, and Dave Scott. Former Junior College Player of the Year, where junior college football is so big in California. And did you see William Andrews, 31, as the lead blocker? I Bang! First and goal, the ball at the nine-yard line. Kane gets the call, gets close to the five-yard line. They'll mark it at the six. Gain of three, it'll be second and seven. Now, I'll tell you guys, there's Lehman Bennett, and he's trying to figure out what in the world to call here. When you get the ball first and goal on the nine-yard line, it really stretches your running game. But they're running so well, I think they ought to stay with it. Ordinarily, I wouldn't. Second and goal, the ball at the seven. Francis goes left. Al Jenkins out to the right. Hand off. Andrews, and he's piled up. Maybe the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. And the time is going to expire here in the third quarter with Atlanta threatening. You're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports. Seattle 24, Atlanta 14 will return for the fourth quarter in a moment. Wednesday, one of Charlie's angels goes undercover in prison. Okay, open up your towel. Chris does hard time. What do you want me to do? In a world where the strongest take what they want. Then a killer is after the best bodies in Vegas. And Dan's stuck in a hot squeeze with Barbie Benton. Good evening, I'm Beverly Byer. Former Texas Governor John Connolly campaigning for the Republican presidential nomination in town tonight talking about nuclear energy. Details right after the movie. Right now, there's a special deal for sports fans at McDonald's. Every time you buy a medium-sized soft drink, you get a special Seahawks glass for only 29 cents more. There are four glasses in all, so get the one with your favorite player. Okay, guys, who gets what? Yeah, that's Steve Rabel glass. Sam McCall no, glass. get the Sherman Smith glass. Sorry, guys, take the two yards of simple glass. Oh, oh you a rookie, man. man. Don't give him glass. Give Sherman's glass, man. <laughs> this week's Seahawks glass features Steve Largent, Sherman Smith, and David Sims. Canada, there's a flavor to this country. A flavor you'll find comes through every time in Canada's kind of beer. Look around and you'll find KOMO Seattle. A fake punt by Seattle in their own territory that failed to pick up the first down. Atlanta took over possession. They now have the football threatening. They have a third and goal to go. The ball inside the seven yard line. Very critical for the Atlanta Falcons. We begin the fourth quarter. Bobkowski. The rollout option. Oh! Fires back and is mishandled, dropped by the tight end, Jim Mitchell. Fran, that's why with nine yards to go, they had to throw earlier. That's Meanwhile, right. you've that's got to feel that Atlanta feels that Mitchell's skills have well, diminished. This is a good call. The play pass action. Mitchell was going to sneak across the line to the left. The throw was not a good throw. It's no, behind it him. But he still, still should have caught the football. He still should have caught the football. Of course he should have. The man's been an all-pro tight end. Fourth down, out comes Tim Mazzetti. He's had his problems. He missed a couple of tip shots last week against San Francisco. He missed a little one that could have won the Denver game that Denver ultimately won in overtime. John James holds. This one was kicked low and was blocked. No good. Now they're booing the bartender from Philadelphia out of the University of Pennsylvania. The great hero a year ago in a Monday night game when he kicked five field goals and beat Los Angeles 15-9. He's missed two extra points in his last two games. Eddie LeBaron told me today his problem has become met. It really has. Early in the year, he missed a field goal against Denver to win a game. There's Jim Mitchell. He's disgruntled. He missed a field goal against Detroit to win that game. And it really has gotten metal with him. The kid's a pretty together kid, but it's gotten to him. That ball was kicked low. No one is feeling worse right now than Jim Mitchell. That field goal attempt probably would not have been necessary. 
ball was slightly behind him, but it should have been caught. He could have scored. On first and ten, Sherman Smith gets the call, picked up by Pridemore after he gets over the 25 to the 26, a gain of six, second and four. Well, you know what Seattle wants to do? They want to play ball control. How much they'll keep it on the ground, how much they'll go in the air will depend on Jim Zorn. But he's not afraid. He'll throw the football. I think they won't sit on it. I think they'll continue to throw the football because it's a tough defense to run against, but it's a relatively easy defense to throw against. Not much that Seattle has not tried tonight. Second down four. Ball at the 26. And off Dornick. Both arms on the football a la Zonka. Drop close to a first down. Bob Buecher in the New York line. <laughs> And it is a Seattle first down. Seattle sporting a 24 to 14 lead. Three and five in their Western Division of the AFC. San Diego and Denver, of course, on top there, both with six and three records. The ball at the 33-yard line of Seattle. Darn. Looks quickly to the right. There's receiver there. Peets, the tight end, not open. He turned, went to McCullum. Incomplete. Well, you can't get games back that you've lost. Seattle keeps looking back to their key game of the year against Denver. They rolled up 34 points, had a huge lead, and suddenly it was all gone. And Denver had captured the football game. Today with John Thompson, the general manager, we were talking about that game. You just can't get them back. That was the day that Craig Morton came off the bench. They win it for Denver, 37-34. Second and 10, Atlanta. They can run, they bottle the football, and Atlanta has it. And Seattle is making mistakes. Right there, they tried to protect the football. They played defensive football, and they paid for it with the turnover. Sherman Smith fumbles. Atlanta has it. Hey, truckers, Dodson's going to pick you up. Going to pick you up like never before. With a bold new look in small pickups, the new Dodson Little Hustler hauls more than bigger rigs on less gas. And new Dotson long bed over seven feet for extra cargo. Explore the pickups for the 80s. You know where. To revolutionize trucking. First and 10 Atlanta from their own 30 yard line. Barkowski back looking. Under throws out of the flat. Intended out there for Andrews. Incomplete. You know, that pass was deflected to the line of scrimmage. That was Bart's fault. He's a big guy, six foot four. You don't throw the ball on a line when you've got a defensive lineman in your face. Andrews is way open. He had to loop the ball over the defensive lineman. He's feeling the stress. The game is to the 31 yard line. The second down seven. Rickman is in there. Draw play, however. Kane has it. Or rather, Andrews. And Andrews moves for good yardage, short of the first down. All right, situation here, Frank, third down in that part of the field. You really got to figure you got two downs to make it. The call here is a running play. Because if you don't make it on third down, you'll get close for a fourth down goal. They need a first down. Third down, about two and a half yards. Andrews, single setback for Atlanta. gets the call. He's very close to the first down. Arnell Webster of Seattle says no, he does not have it, but we are probably going to have a measurement. Nope, they say they do not need to measure, but we have a fourth down. All right, Atlanta this time is putting in two setbacks. Last time they had one setback. In short yardage situations, you need both setbacks in there. One to lead block and the other to carry the ball. The two tight ends are in. Mitchell McKeska 
Andrews 31, Kane 21. Those are setbacks. We're in the fourth quarter. Atlanta trailing by 10 points. The Seattle Seahawks. Kane, he didn't make it. He's Turn on. Right. Seattle says he did not make it. Stalwart effort by the Seattle defense. Decent, I believe, and he does not like where they're marking the ball. <laughs> if, he, if he made it, it's an absolute miracle. Yeah, but the way they put it down, he may have. Spotting of the ball is always critical. Headlines and right on the line of scrimmage, he picks up the progress. And that's going to be an Atlanta first down. And that, my friend, is a break for the Atlanta Falcons. And Beeson is enraged. Look oh. at it again. Look at the penetration of the Seattle defensive line. Here goes Kane up, and he's hit way back by Beeson. They mark where the ball is. Well, the forward plane, maybe you could argue he made it. Well, they hit the lines, but it's stationed right at the line of scrimmage. It's academic, first down Atlanta, near the 20-yard line. Kane in motion. Kane. Uh, just a flanker without a screen man in front of it. Audrey Beeman moving up there quickly, making an open field tackle. After Kane picks up a yard, a yard and a half. You know, that's about the fifth time they've used that play. Seattle's finally figured it out. I like them throwing to the backs, but get them down the field a little bit. That's That play's been worn out. I'll tell you, that was a super play by Beeman. They're tackling a running back in open field. He tackled him right at the line of scrimmage. But Second he, down 10. But he was right up on him at the time, Frank. Quick toss. This is Kane. Andrews out in front of it. Kane. Leathering for a couple. It'll be third down and eight. You're not going to do it that way. Makes no sense. You know, the play selection here in this series has just not been good. First down play to throw the little flare out wasn't good. Run on second down, also not good. He really, Botkowski, as you look at his figures, has gone downhill. He really has. He's struggling to find something. He needs for his own compass to get a completion. He's going to have to get one here down the field. Or the Seattle defense is going uphill. That's right. Third and eight. Francis in motion. Botkowski has the time. That's it. Billy Rickman, touchdown Atlanta. Atlanta back in the ball game. All right. Close. And Botkowski back in the ball game. The most critical down of the game thus far. Credit right. to that offensive line. They gave him the time. They really did. It's a crossing pass. It's a long time. Botkowski, to his credit, had poise, threw that one on the money. Little Billy Rickman hadn't been used much this year. He's got another little man, Howard. He's got one great hands, not much speed, and he's small. But he makes plays for him whenever he gets into the football game. Hey, he was super last year. Rickman filling in for Alfred Jenkins. He just has not played much this year. And he has brought, along with Bartkowski, Atlanta back into this football game. Mazzetti. It's proud, holding his breath. The conversion is good. And Atlanta has drawn close. They're within a field goal of tying this football game up. We'll be back in a moment. Best Zenith ever. System 3 is even better. Even better. The sharpest Zenith picture ever. Sharpest picture. An all-modular chassis designed to be the most reliable Zenith ever. Most reliable. And now, better sound. Four speakers. Audio jacks. Even an audio control center. Better sound. Zenith. System 3. System 3. Now, even better. It's the Battle of the Network Stars with Dick Van Patten, Joanna Cassidy, Robert Conrad, Valerie Bertinelli, Ed Asner, and more, Friday on ABC. He's not been used that frequently this year. Billy Rickman, last year, filling in for an injured Al Jenkins. He caught 45 passes, so we know he can do it, and he has just brought Atlanta back into this football game. They now trail the Seattle Seahawks 24-21. Old key now will be to watch Zorn. He tried to sit on the football the last time. It was a critical mistake. Resulted in a turnover. Led to that Atlanta score. So it's a wide open ball game again with 10 minutes left in the ball game. Seattle's helped, Seattle has helped Atlanta back into the game. That was Billy Rickman's first reception of the year. And what an important one for Atlanta. Tim Mazzetti pumps it. 
Tony Green at his 10-yard line. And Tony Green with a fine return. Gets Seattle out of the hole. They'll have good field position. That's Rick Ben again. Remember, as Fran told you, not one reception this year until that one for the touchdown 45 a year ago. The scouting report on little Billy Rickman is slow but small, but he can play. Slow but small. Slow but small, but he can That's play. That's what they said about Howard Twilley. That's right. All right, pressure back on Jimmy Zorn, but he can handle it. First and ten. Seattle has the ball. Their own 34-yard line. Play action. Going out to McCullum, incomplete. Good defensive play. Lawrence, defensively for Atlanta. Not a good throw by Jim that time. A little tentative. He threw behind Sam McCullum. It'll be interesting to see if Atlanta's going to come and go with their blitzing type defense to try to sit back and cover them. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. They should try to go live or die with their blitz because that's the best thing they got going for them. 9.46 remaining in regulation play. Someone, of course, exhorting their Falcons. They vacillated between booing and exhorting. It's called putt. Play action again by Zorn. Fires out. His favorite receiver is Largent. I'll tell you, that he has was, a first down. He was lucky there. That was not a good throw. That ball waffled and it was low. And it was that man, Largent, who made the completion work. Well, you don't throw them all perfect, and you might like to have an eraser out there like Steve Largent who can make that kind of catch for you. And that gives a little confidence to the quarterback. You now he'll, he'll get untracked a little bit. But there again, Atlanta didn't come with the all-out blitz, Howard. You've had your share of erasers. Have I ever. Thank God for Ahmad Rashad and Sandy yeah, yeah. White. Rashad. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. Dornick piled riding and carrying Yates with him. He's strong. I refer to him as big. He goes about 210. 6-3, and that really isn't all that big anymore in professional football, but he picked up three yards, tucked three yards. It'll be second and seven. Don't forget next Monday night, folks, Houston at Miami. Remember, 35-31 Oilers a year ago. Grits Blitz, that's what we're looking for now. We haven't been seeing. Seconds ticking away. We're inside nine minutes. Largent's flipped to the right. This is McCullum in motion. And off Sherman Smith. And Smith is hit initially there by Joel Williams. Smith short of the first down by about a yard, a yard and a half. Tough back and what a big play now. We mentioned as the minutes waned down in the third quarter that every series was critical then. It's like Mr. Lombardi used to tell his players, you've got to give everything you've got on every single play because any single play can determine the outcome of the entire game. That's what's at stake right here. Now, interesting thing, third and two, Seattle's come with their short yardage offense, the two big tight ends. But I would not be surprised to see him fake the run and go to the pass here. But let's see. Darnick, who should have? Short of the first. It'll be fourth. And about a yard. Yates was there first, and then came his pals. So, unless there's a big gamble here by Patera, it means giving up the football. I don't think we'll see a big gamble here. I think they'll kick it away for once tonight. And they're not indicating that they are inclined to send in the punter, Herman Weaver. Fourth down. Maybe less than a yard, just about a yard. And Jack says, go get it, guys. Well, I'll tell you, this is an interesting call. He's got a lot of guts. I love Jack Patera. I think he's a great football coach. I respectfully disagree with this strategy at this time. I don't think Atlanta can drive the length of the field in Seattle, but they could from here. Whoa, what a play. Less than a yard. Dornick, first down in a big opening, and Dornick is hanging on to the football. As he battles close to the 25-yard line, and as you so often see, 
on short yardage. Once you're through, the linebackers have filled the gaps, and you'll get a big gainer. Well, that's why Jack Patera is the coach, and I'm up here. <laughs> he knew what he was doing. Dorney comes right up the middle. He makes a big play, but some good blocking in the middle of the line with Yarno, Lynch, and Newton. Good job, offensive line. Short yarded situation, as Frank said, that's when you can really bust it. We've seen Leroy Harris do that twice in his days with Miami, Frank. Once in a big Everyone one. is filling gaps on short yardage. You get the opening, you can really tack it on. Once in a big one against Baltimore. All at the 17-yard line. That could take a lot out of Atlanta. The 27 and incomplete intended there for McCollum. No quarrel with that call, Francis. No, and I think the thing to keep in perspective here, a field goal really doesn't uh, help them that much. A field goal only gives them a six-point lead. They need to score a touchdown here. I think Jack Patera understands that, and Jim Zorn understands that. They were going for the touchdown there. Good call. But also, they're chewing up the clock. Six minutes, 12 seconds left. Argent comes back into the game, stops off, has a visit with Quarterback Zorn bringing the play into Zorn. The game is really in the balance on this drive here. Seattle scores a touchdown. It'll be very difficult for Atlanta. Atlanta's defense has got to come to play if they hope to win. Three wide receivers. Rabel, McCollum, and Largent. McCollum is in motion. And off is to Smith, and he's piled up right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and ten. Now they're in trouble. They have dug themselves a hole right now. Third and ten is not easy. However, if you're going to have third and ten, I would just soon have Mr. Zorn at quarterback as most anybody in football. That's a big statement. Well, I would also like to have Bradshaw or Staubach, too. Yeah, I would think. <laughs> but one of those three I would like to have. Or Greasy. Right down the line. Bob may be on his way back off yesterday's performance against Green Bay. Oh, he Bell. had himself a day, didn't he? Yep, and it was nice to see. It really was nice to see. Class guy. Got an old thing in perspective about quarterbacking. They get too much praise and they get too much blame. Well, my goodness. Again, Seattle calls timeout. So, 521 remaining in the game. It'll be third and nine when we return to Atlanta for Seattle. You know, it's really gratifying to see so many guys today enjoying tobacco without lighting up. Just like me, they've gone smokeless. Now, I'm kind of partial to skull with the wintergreen flavor. Or for straight tobacco taste, try Copenhagen. Or mild happy day. Great if you're just starting out. There you go. But whichever, just a pinch between your cheek and gum is all it takes. And I'm mighty proud to say that Copenhagen Skull and Happy Days are official sponsors of the 1980 Winter Olympics. Yeah, you need new tires, Mrs. Allen. Really? What do you recommend, Billy? Oh, well, we've got a full line of Union 76 tires. We've got one for you, depending on how much driving you do. Oh, well, I don't drive much. Just taking the kids to school and the Bridge Club Tuesday, Bowling Thursdays, Little League Saturday, my weekly visit to Mother's. And... <laughs> oh, why, isn't that something? You even had a tire for a stay-at-home like me. Yes, me. Go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. The Seattle Seahawks down to one timeout. Zorn did, either did not like the information he got from the bench or did not like something was going on. Used another timeout. And Frankie's used two timeouts the second half. If they don't score in Atlanta, does score, then he's going to be left with only one timeout to make a, a last-minute try, try of the victory. The ball at the 26-yard line, third down and nine. Largest split to the left. They're coming after him. McCullum split to the right. Atlanta taking the first one. Jump out of it, and Seattle bobbles the ball. Atlanta has it. Well, what you have just seen is Robert a Pennywell recovered for Atlanta. What you've just seen is a whole series of foul ups. Yep. And as Frank and Fran have discussed, along with me so often, now watch the snap. It almost hits him in the chin. But no matter, the two wasted timeouts were the key because when the coach keeps sending in the plays, some confusion, especially with young people, can result. And you could see it almost happening before you hear. So Atlanta is still alive with five minutes, 18 seconds left. And the important part, Howard, if Atlanta does score, Seattle only has one timeout exactly. to use in the last, in the last uh, couple minutes. 5-18. 
Remaining in the game, Atlanta has the ball. They're at their own 26-yard line, and here comes Len Kane. And Kane pounded, but stays on his feet at the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you, Terry Beeson Boy, made a he, great play there. Terry Beeson, the middle linebacker, met Kane as he cut back, and that was it. Again, it may be a foot. It'll be second down, long nine. There's Terry Beeson. Here it is, a running play on the first down. Watch 58 in the top of your screen coming to fill the hole. He's going to come from nowhere and make a play. He comes through the blocker. That's some football play. Gets a little help from Archie Beeman. Atlanta's going to have to throw the ball if they hope to get back in this thing. Rickman split to the left. Kane, 99 yards on the night rushing. Bartkowski is going to be sacked. Down he goes. Gregory was in there first. He got help from Duasa Sopo. Well, watch this. They're going for the touchdown, the long bomb. He's going to set up and pump and then try to hit Rickman long. This is not good Look football. Look at Gregory fight through that block. Only from a team as laden with personnel as Dallas could Gregory have been let go, and he went in a tree. But the point of the thing, Howard, they're trying to go for a long bomb on second and ten when you, your defense is expecting pass. They're going to pass rush you hard. It's just not a good call. Now they've got themselves, they've got themselves in a hole of third and 20. Clock moving, 4-10. Gregory with a big play. Third down, 18. Wallace Francis in motion. And it uh, was Tuasasopo first, and then Gregory got the sack. Gregory second. Tuasasopo pressuring, and then Gregory was there. Well, you can't win that way. That brings up fourth down, and James will have to putt, and he is going to be putting from the end zone. They had the ball, first and ten, at their own 26-yard line. They are now inside their own ten at the nine. Good defensive play by Seattle. Fair catch, called for, and made a crowd it. by Tony Green. I think has got it. Did they give him enough room? I think they did. It was his own man, I believe. 3.40 now on the clock. Frank, you got a flag down on the field. Atlanta might have had somebody going down the field too quickly. Flag down way back towards the end zone. That's what the call was. You're exactly and right. downfield early. Ineligible man downfield. Isn't it amazing? This game at times so brilliantly played, so excitingly played, now deteriorating into being poorly played. On that last series, you could blame partially the Atlanta offensive line, which failed to give Bodkowski protection, and then Bodkowski himself, who's been extremely slow in the late going. Remember Fran's interview with him, which we played at the start of the game, in which Bodkowski admitted that absence of his consistency had been his problem. They're going to bring it back. Atlanta's going to have to kick again. But the point is, Howard, I really think they made had a bad series of plays there. You don't want to put your offensive line in that kind of pressure situation where they've got a block with a second and 12 or second and 14 when the defense knows they're going to have to throw the football. And that's exactly what they did, and they try to throw deep. Tony Green should have let that ball drop. He shouldn't have gone near it because he was overwhelmed by a whole coterie of red shirts around. You're absolutely right. This is a big break for Seattle. There's referee Bob Frederick. Three forty left in the game. Here's the call. Ineligible man downfield on the kicking team. Five yard penalty. Half the distance, not five yards, half the distance. Repeat of the fourth down. And this means that James will not have his customary dish. Uh, well, just about the yardage he would be kicking from. He's very way at the back of the end zone, and you can really figure the saddle's going to go for it. They do, but James hurries it, gets off a good kick. Fair catch called for cautiously by Tony Green, and rightfully so. So Seattle will have the football at the 45-yard line of the Atlanta Falcons. 3.32 remaining in the game. We'll be back in just a moment. Wherever you grew up, going home these days can be quite a surprise. 
Because everywhere you go, America is remodeling. So good to see the folks again. So, good to see so many things to share. So good to see the home I knew and love. And at Georgia Pacific, we're helping more Americans remodel with our products than ever before for living space. Always knew it had. Or enjoying space. Great possibilities. And you can find the building materials you need at thousands of our registered dealers everywhere. Like pre-cut wood products, the plans, the ideas, the help you need to do projects yourself. Because at Georgia Pacific, we see America's older homes as one more resource we can't afford to waste. Daddy, you haven't changed a thing. Georgia Pacific. Great. Oil, gas, coal, gypsum, timber, and the skill to manage them. Saturday, top regional action. First, Syracuse, Pittsburgh. Ohio State, Illinois, plus other games. Then, Arizona State, Stanford. Headlines later games. Check local listings on ABC. Regional college football. And consult the directory to see which game you'll be receiving in your area. College football here on ABC. And on the graphic, you saw Wake Forest up there. And they've been a surprise of the ACC with a great young quarterback, Benuto. He's having a wonderful year for them. Seattle, first and ten. Ball at the 45-yard line. Their efforts now directed at the clock. It says 3.32 remains in the game. Dornick, single setback, gets the call. Finds a little opening. Gets about the 36-yard line. Gain of four. It'll be second and six. Howard Frank, uh, Atlanta has one chance here. They've got to put nine people up on the line of scrimmage. they got to use safety blitzes, corner blitzes. That time they did not. See how? Let's go Seahawks. See, see, Seattle's going to try to run the ball. The best defense against the runs to put nine people up there. That's when Zahn broke it for a touchdown. Remember? I'd, I'd still take the percentage play there and put him up there. And they don't have him up there. I don't understand it. Dornick, 81 yards on the night. McCullum in motion for Seattle. Dornick gets the call again. I rolls ahead and gets very close to the first down. I really and don't. We're going to see a measurement. 245 left. 243. First down. They don't even have to measure. That is absolutely unbelievable. I just don't understand <laughs> why they don't have everybody up there. They have a slim chance, but the best chance they have is to have everybody in the line of scrimmage with their safety blitzes. They're going to run the football. They don't want to throw it now. Atlanta has three timeouts. We'll anticipate one before the two minute warning. Stretching the 30-second clock. Dornick. They're still not up there. Given the assignment to kill the clock, and he picks up a quick nine yards. Finally stopped by Brezina. He's wound up with a pretty good game, Mr. Dornick. And there is the two-minute warning. Four yards. Two-minute warning. Second down and one. And we'll be back in Atlanta. The crowd anticipating what is going to happen, and that is Seattle. Can you imagine trying to photograph an Olympic gold medalist like Jean-Claude Killy? It's quite a challenge. Made me really appreciate my Canon AE-1. The automatic shutter priority system is a must, especially when your subject's doing 50 miles an hour. Try it, it's fun. What? The AE-1 is so simple to use. About all you do is focus and click. The incomparable Canon AE-1, so advanced, it's simple. Canon. The official 35 millimeter camera of the Winter Olympics. After all these years, I still like working out. But what I really like is the beer that's waiting for me when it's over. And if you work out the way we do, there better be a lot of beer waiting. That's why we drink light beer from Miller. Light has one third less calories than regular beer, and it's less filling, and it tastes great. Take it from a guy who works out a lot. Could really use one right now. Here you go, bro. <laughs> like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. The festivities continue here in Atlanta. And the football, however, lacking somewhat. Atlanta unable to stop Seattle. They just gave the ball to Dornick in consecutive attempts. And Dornick has been rambling right through the middle of the Atlanta defense. Maybe, if they, put, one. maybe if they put her in there, she could stop the Seahawks. She'd get their attention. Little doubt about that. Ball close to the 25-yard line. Second down, one. 
got Miami Houston next Monday night. That ought to be quite a game. And then we have them later in the year. Miami, that is, against New England. And Houston later against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Denver, San Diego coming up out in the AFC Western Division. Right now they're tied for the lead. They must be looking on tonight. Guess what, gang? They got everybody up this time. Second and one. Darnick. <laughs> Goodbye. Makes no difference. Touchdown right up the middle. That's what happens when you have everybody up, Sir Francis. Long. The best defense against the run is a blitzing, and anybody knows that. That's just not good football on defense, but you've got to have them up there. I'll tell you, that they was just a got fine blocked. block by Yarno. John Yarno, the tackle. But they have the first down. John Yarno with a tremendous block for Seattle. What a night Dornink has had. He really has, hasn't he? Over 100 yards. 121 to be exact. So that just about does it. A terrific loss facing Atlanta. Virtually puts them out of things. Seattle two games behind San Diego and Denver with outside hopes. A friend Herrera for the conversion. And a friend Herrera puts it to the uprights. And we have 154 remaining in the game. Seattle now leading 31 to 21. Check your pulse. Here comes the new Datsun 200 SX. Zero to 50 in 8.4 seconds with a revolutionary new fuel-injected engine that gives you the best gas mileage in its class. Inside plush velour buckets, power steering, overdrive 5. The young new Datsun 200 SX. To give you the drive of your life. Antifreeze, you never think about it or how it has to protect somebody beside you or what could happen without antifreeze. Stranded in freezing weather and no help for miles. Don't trust your luck. Don't trust the weather. Take out old, weak antifreeze now and put your trust in Prestone too. More people trust Prestone than all other brands combined. I've been worried about you. More people trust Prestone. And when you flush your cooling system, trust Prestone Super Flush. Dan Dornick of the Seattle Seahawks having himself quite a night. As is the offensive line for the Seahawks. Howard, you pointed up a while ago, with the edge the AFC has over the NFC, there's no question the AFC has better football teams than the NFC, and I'm an old NFC man talking. And it's been that way for the last three or four years. Well, this will make it overwhelming. Yes, it 21 will. 21 to 9. Fren Herrera drills it along the ground. Picked up by Haskell Stanback. And stand back. Gets out over the 30, close to the 35 yard line, where Atlanta will take over. First and 10. They trail by 10 points. They have three timeouts. And there is the youngster. He was put on quite a show tonight. Again, came up last year as a seventh round draft pick with the Giants. Did all right there. Had over 300 yards with a 5 1 average. Came into the night as Seattle's leading receiver with 33 receptions. And put together a 121 yard night and did it the hard way. 148 remaining in the game. Wallace Francis in motion for Atlanta. This is Francis over the middle. He has it complete. Out close to midfield. Hit there by Dave Brown. Wallace Francis. I believe his first reception of the night. Yes, he's been suspiciously silent. Botkowski, for whatever reason, hasn't thrown to him. Came in tonight with 37. But tonight, he has not received much attention from the Atlanta offense. Figures are misleading. The 11 of 20, that's always a deceptive statistic. Only 94 yards, Fran. I think that's the important one, how many yards they got throwing the football. Only 94, 94 yards is not enough, especially against a powerful offensive team like the Seattle Seahawks. Jim Zorn has had himself quite a night. He had what a day he had last week against Houston. He went 11 straight. Wound up in the first half 14 of 60. Wound up for the day last week against Houston 18 of 23 for 252 yards and three touchdowns. Tonight Zorn 13 of 25 197 yards. You know the interesting thing here Seattle's compared many times with Tampa Bay Howard and their growth. 
but would you think that if Seattle was playing in the National Football uh, Central Conference that they might be on top of that conference also? Yes, I think so. Speaking of Tampa Bay, they're right on top of that Central Division. Seven and two, nearest team to them, Minnesota. On first and ten, Barkowski fires. Complete, goes to Lynn Kane. Kane with a gain of about seven. Give him six, it'll be second down and four. Counting out rapidly now. Bartkowski knows there's only one way to pull this game out, if at all possible, and that is get one quickly. Andrews trying to get to the sidelines to stop the clock. Well, they've had a way of getting the Hail Marys against New Orleans, but that's when one touchdown would win it for them. There's the time remaining. Well, they were famous, Howard, for the miracle finishes of a year ago. There's Jimmy Zorn. But this year, they had one miracle finish. Uh, hello, Jimmy. Good night. <laughs> they had one miracle finish in the first game of the season against New Orleans, but since then, there have been no miracles. And this would really be a miracle tonight if they pulled this one out. He looks like a Boy Scout troop leader. He's a tremendous young oh, man. Great sense of humor. On first down, Barkowski fires and is complete to Alfred Jackson, the second-year man out of Texas. But an all-time... University of Texas record during his collegiate career there. Now I know our fans sitting at home there wondering why couldn't they have been doing this all night? And I'll tell you, I don't know why. <laughs> well, Seattle is giving them a lot now. They would not be giving them ordinarily. Lehman Bennett. That's a good football coach, Lehman Bennett. He's a very stable guy. He keeps his cool. He's done a good job here in Atlanta. They're having troubles this year, but he's building a solid football organization, he and Eddie LeBaron. We a tough loss one tonight. Took him to the playoffs last year with a 9-7 and seven record. On first down, Barkowski again with a lot of time. Man open in the end zone is Rickman. Well, well. Yeah, Rickman, well, well. touchdown Atlanta. And you know what's <laughs> coming up following the conversion. The stands are nearly empty, but those still remaining are standing. And hope is eternal. Brickman, his second touchdown of the night for Atlanta. And his second catch of the season. Maybe they should be playing any more. This is a good throw by Steve. Brickman has beat his man over there. Cornell Webster. A little help by Archie Beamer, but he catches the ball. How about this scenario? They make the extra point onside kick and hit Big Ben down the right sideline. Then you'd have your miracle finish. I'm telling you. Mazzetti needs the conversion. He gets it. And stay tuned for the onside kick. 51 seconds on the clock. Now, you don't think Jack Patera is a little nervous? As far-fetched as it may seem, I know he is. He'll have all of his sure hands along the front for Seattle. Receiver tights. 51 seconds. Frank, let's talk about Big Ben and what it is. What Big Ben is, they line up three receivers on the same side of the field. Send them down and say, run as far as you can. And Steve Barkowski, throw it as far as you can and hope that somebody will tip the ball to the other. Or you have pass interference. Now keep in mind also... Billy, you're having yourself a night. Frank, keep in mind also, a field goal will put the thing in overtime. That might disrupt your getaway plans, but that's the way it is. I'd like to see it. <laughs> Would you? Sounds good. <laughs> Atlanta. They'll be going with the onside kick. Now, many times teams will shift their players all to one side of the field and then try the onside kick. Let's see if Atlanta goes to such a shift. Seattle has everyone up except one man deep. And most of the people they have up are either wide receivers, defensive backs, or running backs, people that are used to handling the football. That's who's up there to try to catch this onside kick. Let's see if Atlanta goes to the shift. I don't think they are. Yeah, they, they are. Here they come. Here they come. They're going to kick it to Seattle the shifting with them. And they'll kick it to the left side, Frank. I would think. <laughs> Good kick. It has to go 10 yards. Good kick. Atlanta. What do you believe it? Have it. <laughs> well, this is. That ball had to travel 10 yards. And it, no oh, my goodness. Down, so Atlanta <laughs> has it. They have it just about 10 yards and a foot. Can you imagine? Look at 
Jim Zorn doesn't believe it. There. Maybe we can get a look at Patera. Now, Atlanta has two timeouts, 50 seconds. They've got plenty of time. They've got the ball. Where? Where is it, Frank? Is it on the 45-yard line? Ball at the 45-yard line. Two timeouts remaining. Look they at need it. a field goal to tie it up. That is a great onside kick. Give Tim Mazzetti a lot of credit. And he's been beleaguered this year. But, boy, what a kick. This is getting interesting. They're not in the Big Ben. Wallace Francis spread out to the right with Alfred Jackson. Jackson in motion. They hit him earlier, coming across the middle from that set. He's open now. He's got him open. He's got him open. Oh, 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 oh. 42 seconds. They could win it. Howard, you said Seattle's stinking Denver game again. They had the Denver game won, 34 to 10. Lost the game to Denver. I don't believe this. What a throw. Drew Bartkowski, Alfred Jackson running the corner pattern. Perfect, right on the money. Wallace, Wallace Francis, Francis. He finally found them twice in the late going. I'll bet 50,000 people have left this Yeah, stadium. what a tragedy. There's no one here really to see it. We're the only ones here. <laughs> Two timeouts. The ball situated right at the 10-yard line. A field goal, no problem. A touchdown wins it. All right, all he's got to be careful of here is don't throw the interception. Throw for the end zone. Two tight ends. McKeska and Mitchell, single wide receiver. Wallace Francis, single setback, that is. <laughs> He's got him. Oh! Did he intercept it? He intercepted it. it. The one thing he had a guard against. Dave right. Brown, Dave Brown. the interception. My the one goodness. thing. It and was not hardly out of your mouth, friend. And you talk about a beleaguered man, which Dave oh. Brown has been in his career. So, in an incredible finish, Atlanta blew an almost certain tie. All right, here he goes. He's really blind here, coming back. He's got a, a halfback on a swing down the sideline. Dave Brown drops off with his outside receiver, gets in position to make the interception, and he made it. What an interception. It was a beauty. Dave Brown, who started every game Seattle has ever played, and a former number one draft pick with the Pittsburgh Steelers, oh. comes up with a big play Wonderful. for Seattle. 35 seconds remaining. Seattle can run it out. Atlanta can stop it twice. Doesn't matter. I can picture George Allen. I got to tell you, people, my heart goes out to Steve Burkowski because there was a game against the Los Angeles Rams some years ago. When the quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings did the same thing in overtime, they cost us the victory, and we got a tie. That's a tough feeling. And he wore the same number. Yes, he did. So you are executive producer of ABC Sports. is Rune Arley. JBC's NFL Monday Night Football produced by Dennis Lewin, directed by Chester Forty. Our technical director, Bill Morris. Associate director, Rob Biner. Technical manager, Coach Coltrane. Unit manager, Dennis Zabo. I mentioned George Allen because if ever there was a man who taught against mistakes, who knew how to take advantage of every opportunity, whose teams play opportunistic football, it was George Allen. And that was just a brutal mistake. They couldn't miss a tie. The thing about it, when I said he had somebody open, and he had to, he had to split in open inside, and he went to the swing halfback. That's the football game. Atlanta cannot stop it. That's right. Anymore. Timeouts are gone. 27 Body's seconds over. on the clock. And there's Bartkowski. And you know what he's going through, but let's oh. put it this way. He also brought him back into this game. Yes, he did. That's not what he'll remember. Of it course is. it isn't. He's a competitor and a winner. It's a tough position to play. And I think the position is getting tougher and tougher all the time. The quarterbacks <laughs> in this league who have to go 16 weeks with all the scrutiny every week of every play they do. It's tough. And Jack Patera is breathing a big sigh of relief. But how are these two teams have given us a great football game? They did. I think it was our best game of the year. It had great excitement. It had great inventiveness. And suddenly, in the fourth quarter, it did deteriorate. But then Atlanta's near. Unbelievable oh. comeback brought it all back. This will be the last play of the game. Atlanta unable to stop the clock any further. That's it. Excitement. We've had a share of that. The unexpected, we've had that. Atlanta jumping off to a 14 to nothing lead. Seattle keeping their composure under this man, Jack Patera, gambling when it counted. Coming back to ultimately win it 31 to 28 in a thriller. 
And for this man, it'll be a long night and a long week. Once again, the final score, Seattle 31, Atlanta 28. Be sure to join us next week for ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the Houston Oilers against the Miami Dolphins from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. Travel arrangements made through and a promotion will be paid by United Airlines. More people fly United to Hawaii than any other airline. This has been a presentation of the leader, ABC Sports, bringing you exclusive coverage when the world comes to America this February for the 1980 Winter Olympics.